television network. Last year, the Scottish Claymores looked up to the rest of the league, but not anymore. They've gone from worst to first and have been the class act of 1996. The Frankfurt Galaxy, of course, have been here before. Last year, they went into Admiral's home territory and became the first team ever to beat them in Amsterdam as they won the World Bowl. Today, they'll have to repeat that success to defend their title. Scotland may have something to say about that. At 68-04, your goal for LOI. And this is the one we've all been waiting for. Yes, hello from Murrayfield. Nearly 40,000 fans are making their way from the pregame party to their seats, and we expect an absolutely wonderful atmosphere here today. With me is our own American football encyclopedia, <laughs> Mike Carlson, and I'm also delighted to welcome one of the World League's most restrained characters, Barcelona Dragons head coach, Jack McNeil. What the hell are we doing? We just give him one like that? Damn it! Come on now, Chris. You gotta make that play. Jesus, Chris. Oh. Oh, God. What the hell? Be smart with the ball, kid. Come on. Big play, D. Big play, D. Come on, babe. Come on, babe. Come on, D. Come on, D. Okay, we're, we're unbelievable, Dick. We're just the dumbest freaking football team I've ever been around. What the hell was that? God damn it! You losing son of a That's bull Make a freaking play. God darn it. Just let him take and go down the damn field. For Christ's sake, you some comments. Well, wait, well, don't get sick today. Get sick tomorrow, not today. I tell you what. Just not to make me want to throw up. Get Josh to tuck his pants in. At least he looks like a football player. Well, what's the problem? That's the two-minute warning. Two-minute warning. Relax. <laughs> <laughs> that was the PG version. Yeah, yeah. That, yeah. That, that but Jack, my, my stuff, question is, <laughs> you have a guy there throwing, puking his guts up. Don't get sick today. Get sick tomorrow. <laughs> that wasn't very nice. No. It really wasn't. <laughs> 
Oh. And of course, the World Bowl wouldn't be the World Bowl without Gia Milinovic causing chaos and confusion pitch side and in the crowd. Well, I hope I'm not causing too much chaos and confusion. You can see the Claymore is warming up behind me. If you want to do a little 360 degree with me, you can see that the fans are filing in. They're coming in from the power party. Just over there, you can see a bagpipe band. Now, I've been told that there's 36,000 people here today. Only 1,000 of them are going to be rooting for the galaxy, so it's going to be pretty big for the Claymores here today. I'm going to be here on the sidelines. Hopefully, there won't be any injuries for the Claymores, so hopefully you won't be seeing too much of me because I'm going to find out how the players are. Well, that's all for me. I'll give you another last look at the big pipe band, and it's back upstairs to you, Kevin. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Gia. Now, Jack, the, the Frankfurt Galaxy are used to playing in front of big crowds, cheering for them. Is this going to affect them? No, I don't think so. I, I really think they're going to enjoy the, the atmosphere here. It's a great atmosphere. The more I see this, the, this is major college, I mean, major league football, and I'm really impressed by it. All right, now, now coming into a big game like this, let's, looking at it from the Claymore's point, is it better to be emotionally pumped up or just calm and relaxed coming out here to play? I think you've got a combination of things. You want them relaxed up to the point of the game time. You want them pumped up at the right time. You don't want them leaving the game in the zone. I mean, Jack would know better than me. He coached uh, the Barcelona against 61,000 people in London for the first World Bowl. So do you use the fans, the home fans, to your advantage? Or, I mean, in that case, you were, you were the away team. They, they, the home fans will really help you as, as you get involved in the game. But you're so concerned about your assignment, you're concerned about being a unified team, that the, the fans, you're not thinking about. But when you need the goal line stand, they start to holler. That really helps you. Now, what has happened with Frankfurt? All of a sudden, they've just they've come alive. They've gotten healthy. You know, this league is so funny. If you're, if you're banged up, you, you've got a problem. And then you get healthy. And Pelour had ribs. And, and really was knocked around for a couple of weeks. He's now healthy, and, and they're getting healthy, and, and, and Scotland is not as healthy as they were. So that, that has a big factor in Two. the game. Okay, all right then, that's fine. We'll come back to you fellas, but thanks for the moment. Now today, of course, is a combination of a four-month period of training and match action for the players. One of the biggest announcements made way back then was that Scotland's former rugby union captain, Gavin Hastings, was to be the Claymore's kicker. Time to find out how his season has gone. You think Gavin Hastings is only a football player? Well, you're wrong. He does photo opportunities also. Gavin is a businessman. And he practices for the World Bowl. African. I'm East African. Oh, Always wanted to go there. Uh-huh. Uh, they've been very helpful here at the post office. Very helpful. Very All this with only a couple of days to go before the World Bowl. His day starts with a PR and photo opportunity for the post office, launching a new foreign exchange service in one of Edinburgh's largest post offices. So we've got all the German marks here ready for the Frankfurt fans coming in on Sunday, eh? Yes. How much is 200 marks worth? You don't know? It's not too many countries to know in all of my heart. Come on, my friend. Look at them. You've got to understand all this. 700 German marks, so we're okay. I think that will buy a ticket for the World Bowl, won't it? I'm sure it will. All right, how are you doing? Thank you. Good. You got any message yeah. on this? Great. Thank you, well, I'll just amend them. You can put the calls through, okay? Thanks. One duty performed, but no time to lose now. Gavin has to rush to the office for 15 minutes of work before it's off to training. And then it's time for the real work of the day to start as he drives down the familiar route to Glasgow for training with the Claymores. But why has he chosen PR for his post-rugby life? What I wanted once I left rugby was to start a new challenge. And uh, I felt that the contacts that I built up over my years of playing rugby um, were a good place to start as far as me setting myself up in business. And uh, so that's what happened. And, it, you know, it meant that this sort of void, I guess, that you could say had been created by me not having to devote as much time to playing rugby, um, I could devote that time into starting up my business, and, and that's in fact what happened. The final practice for today's challenge, no better time to reflect on his first season. How important was the first PAT that you made at White Hart Lane? <laughs> Well, it was probably the most nerve-wracking one I've ever taken, and uh, you were going into the unknown, uh, never having done it before and not knowing whether you were capable of doing it. So 
That was a very important kick. But this really is his first real test. High snap, Terry Carr brings it down. And it goes through. Gavin Hastings has made a perfect start to his career. So how would you rate your season? <laughs> I think uh, it all depends on what happens in, on Sunday. Um, you know, we win on Sunday. It's been a fantastic season. We're losing Sunday for me. It'll be a very disappointing conclusion to the end of the season that really promised so much. And, uh, you know, but we're not contemplating defeat on Sunday. We're going to go out and uh, get after Frankfurt and, and hopefully win the third game against them this season. Hey, uh, Jack, now, you know, here you have a national player, but it was said early in the preseason that the team with the best nationals would be in the World Bowl. Was that a true statement? I'm not sure that was a true statement, but I think Gavin Hastings has been a real positive uh, person for the entire league and and each team had good nationals but uh, you know they they were important but you know there's 42 players yeah, both these teams had guys who weren't necessarily the best in the league but who could contribute offensively and defensively Cooper and Waldron Ingo Seibert and Messmer they could at least put them out there which gave them a big advantage but the Galaxy remember we were talking about yep. the Galaxy's up and down season I got two good theories on that one one is Steve Pluer's mother-in-law. She was there for the four games they lost. She took off and they won two in a row. Steve says he would never say that it was her fault, but it's true. And Ed Smith, their tight end, he missed the four games they missed, and he's back in the lineup now. Okay, so all the mothers-in-laws, if you're right in, make sure you address it to Mike. <laughs> Time for us to take a short break. On our return, we'll be talking to the man who could hold the galaxy's hope in his right hand. Watching Sky Sports 2. Sky Sports presents one of the biggest nights in the world wrestling calendar. Featuring the WWF Championship bout, the WWF Intercontinental title, the WWF Tag Team Championship, and the biggest bout of them all, King of the Ring. Some may dream of being king, but only one man can achieve it. WWF King of the Ring, tonight at midnight, live and exclusive on Sky Sports. The new Stenoline HSS. Now you can experience jet-powered journeys you thought possible only in the air. The comfort you enjoy in your own home. The leisure facilities you find in an entertainment complex. of staff and choice of food you expect in a hotel combined with an unrivaled frequency of service the new Stenoline more ships and more sailings on more routes to Ireland France and the continent than any other line Stenoline the next generation of ferry company Let me see what spring is like on Jupiter and Mars. In other words, hold my hand. In other words, darling, kiss me. Fill my heart with song and let me sing forevermore. You are all I long for, all I worship and adore. In other words, Please be true, in other words, I love you. Every day, our systems and services help carriers and immigration authorities meet their commitments. ICL, information technology, supporting your way of life. Welcome back. We've met one man who could have a major influence on this game for the Claymores. Time now to talk to Steve Pallor, the Galaxy quarterback, on whom so much could rest. For the Frankfurt Galaxy, the road to the World Bowl has been more like a roller coaster ride. Up when they won four games in a row to start the season, down when they lost four in a row to follow that, 
and up again when they won the two games when it mattered in order to qualify for that second World Bowl place. Quarterback Steve Palour has been a key to the Galaxy. He's played well when they've won. When he hasn't played well, they've lost. Today, before the team travels to Scotland, Steve's relaxing at the team hotel. So is it a case of the team following your fortunes or you following the teams? Well, I think it's probably a combination of, of all, all those things. I think, um, you know, I think we just really struggled uh, in the middle of the season. I think, uh, you know, I struggled. We, we struggled offensively. Our defense continued to play well, but um, we just weren't getting in the end zone. And, uh, you know, three weeks ago, it looked like we were headed home early and uh, Everybody was very down, and so I've never had anything like this where it's turned around so dramatically. Now, you were finally benched, and Brad Bretz got the start, and no sooner had he started than he got hurt and was out. You had to come in off the bench. Did that seem like a chance for you to redeem yourself? I, I saw it as an opportunity to come back and kind of redeem myself and show that I still could play well, and I think um, it was hard to be a team captain and, and a leader of the team and be a part of the slump. Seems like whenever you're able to hit your receivers deep, the Galaxy win the game, and when you're not, they don't. The games we've won, we've hit big plays on people, and um, that's really given us a lot of momentum. So I think as a group of receivers, they're probably the best I've been with. Each of them has different qualities about them, and uh, it's fun to game plan knowing the kind of talent I have. Now, Mario Bailey had a big catch in Week 9, just like his World Bowl catch in 95. He had a big catch to set up a touchdown last week. Is he a big play receiver? He definitely is. I mean, he, he takes a routine catch and makes it into a huge play, and, and he has the ability to, to make big plays going way down the field. And so my problem is just to make sure I give him enough air to, to run under it and, and let him run. What's the one thing that makes Scotland such a dangerous team? I think the biggest thing is that they're just a solid team. There's no glaring weaknesses at all. They've got good talent everywhere, um, and they don't make you know big mistakes. Usually, um, the big plays against them have been lucky plays, fluke plays, scrambles, and so it's hard to consistently beat a team like that. Now, your wife Jennifer is about to have your first child about 10 days after the World Bowl. Yes, yeah, she, she's excited that we're playing, but she would like me home as soon as possible. <laughs> Steve Pallor. Now, people will say both Pallor and Ballard are going to be very important in this game, but it's been said that no way can Frankfurt win today's game with the lack of a running attack. Well, the question is, will they have a lack of a running attack today? And, and most teams are looking in the box between tackle and tackle. If there's seven guys in there, they don't want to try to run. They, you're not going to run. But if there's six guys or five guys and they bring in nickel, you're going to see Bolton running with the football. So I think Frankfurt will have a running attack, although they've struggled recently with it. Okay. Now, the men calling the match for today are Ron Pitts and Nick Hawley. And here are their views on the game. Yeah, thanks very much, fellas. You know, back here behind us, there's a real party going on. I mean, this is this is a Frankfurt-sized party. Ron Pitts here, he's a bit of a party animal, but this oh, is something special. Oh, I can't it? wait. I'm going to take this jacket up and jump out in there. That's, that's really great. It's been like this all year long here. Maybe not to these numbers, of course, because it's World Bowl time, but it has been huge. The fans have supported this team. The team responds back to the fans, and it's, uh, it's great. Well, I've had a chat with both head coaches while we've been uh, getting ready for the build-up. Jim Kreiner looks very relaxed and happy. Ernie Storner, yeah. he seems tense. Well, he's got a good reason to be tense. On the way here, the Frankfurt bus got lost. And uh, he kind of composed himself right before we had a chance to chat with him. But you can tell it's definitely on his mind. So we'll see what happens and how that weighs when the game starts. Well, let's get some predictions now. You want to see us two make a fool of ourselves. Ron, <laughs> how do you see it going? Well, you're not going to agree with this, but I kind of like Frankfurt. I like them because I think that Frankfurt has the better talent of the two teams. I think they've had some uh, hard road back, being that, you know, people went after them this year, the World Bowl champions, et cetera, et cetera. But the Claymores are, are a better coach team, I think. I think they've got it all together. And Jim Ballard is really the icing on the cake. you got to like him. Well, so he's going for Frankfurt. He knows nothing about the game. <laughs> no. I'm going to stay with Scotland by two touchdowns. And I'll tell you something else. This crowd is going to make it very, very yeah. hostile out there. And Jack McNell will know all about that because he took his Dragons into London back in 1991 when it was all London. So uh, Jack, no doubt, will have a few thoughts about that. We're going to try and fight our way into the commentary box. Back to you guys. 
Yeah, hey, a split decision on their choices, but the teams are on their way out of the dressing room now, waiting to be introduced to the almost capacity crowd. We'll be back for that. To say thank you to their customers, BT are giving money off longer calls in July. And August. And August. After you've been talking for 10 minutes, you automatically get 25% off the rest of the call to anywhere. Any time of the day. Any time of the day. What's going on? What do you reckon? It's a good offer, isn't it? Ooh, I don't know. I'm a duck. It's good to talk, and it's even better in July and August. Lemon Viennetta is full of zest. Irresistible vanilla ice cream with layer upon layer of refreshing lemon crisp. Lemon Viennetta from Walls. Mmm. Blood the Impaler. Whole spicy chicken breast, the KFC Zinger Burger. <laughs> Let me see what spring is like on Jupiter and Mars. In other words, hold my hand. In other words, darling, kiss me. Fill my heart with song and let me sing forevermore. You are all I long for, all I worship and adore. In other words, Please be true, in other words, I love you. Beauty. From the first time you use it. Organics Root Nourishing Shampoo. It's all sports. Biggest ever, big sale, and it's on now. Big savings on big brands, up to 50% off selected items. All sports. It's not your average sale. The winner and new. Malika has got it. Ben has lost his title. The boxing world bowed its head in disbelief when the Dark Destroyer lost his title. I'm not going to make up any excuse. But how cool is that? And for the Celtic warrior, his dream showdown looked to be in ruins. So now, true to his word, Nigel Benn will return to accept the challenge. To me, Nigel Benn, the legend. Can the Dark Destroyer once again rule the world? Coming soon on Sky Sports. Just moments away from team introductions, but first, let's remind ourselves of the best moments from 10 weeks of World League action. Why doesn't somebody stand up and compete? Huh? When you were young and your heart was an open book You used to say This ever-changing world in which we live in makes you give in and cry. Say, live and let die.
this ever-changing world in which we live in makes you Okay, the crowd's ready. The players are ready. Over 200 million television viewers worldwide are ready. Let's meet the players and say a very good afternoon once again to Ron Pitts and Nick Hawley. Welcome back to the Frank Beck Yes, thanks very much indeed. And I must say a sense of a real big game atmosphere here at Murrayfield. There must be close to 40,000 fans here. And I'll tell you something, Ron, there's only a couple of thousand from Frankfurt at best. <laughs> How about the party outside? Oh, Boy, unbelievable. That, that was amazing. But, you know, it's been like this here all season long. The fans have been tremendous, and the players really cater back to the fans. That's something you don't see back home in the States, and I think that that, uh, that every, everybody's been better off for it, too. That's the one reason the World Bowl is here. Fans treat you right. The team takes care of the fans, they win games. Well, you've been into some big games, Ron, when you've been very much the sort of the, the underdogs on a team that basically nobody wants to see, see win in the stadium. And that's yeah. what's going to be going through the minds of these Galaxy players. Does that get to you as a player, or do you really put it out of your mind? No, actually, some teams thrive off of it. The Buffalo Bills, of course, going to the big show four years in a row in the Super Bowl and not winning. They get better. They play better. They get fired up when everybody's down on them. And I looked into the eyes of some of these Galaxy players, and I really think that they are fired up off the fact that they know everybody in this stadium but most of the people in the stadium are against them. They take that as energy. Just saw Brad Brett, the injured quarterback, walking through there. Ernie Stortner has done it again. A World Bowl winner last year. His team in free fall in week eight, but he dragged them back up by their bootstraps. Speaking of free fall, remember last year, both coaches, him and Al Luganville, came out at the start of the World Bowl, and they both fell. Al Luganville separated his shoulder, had to spend the whole game in a, in a little cast. So uh, I'm glad, I know Ernie's glad he got that part over with. <laughs> Ronnie Wolfolk just gone through. Here's Don Reynolds. For me, the unsung hero of this Galaxy defense. There is. Here's a guy last week, four pass deflections, a huge play, key interception in the last few minutes of the game. Big Frank. Well, he doesn't look intimidated, does he? He looks like he's ready to rumble. Just think, two years ago, this guy was playing Division Four German football. Well, he's a guy that they were happy to get back. I know talking to Ernie Stoutner in the beginning of the season, Mesmer was out, and uh, they were definitely hurting him. They called him their best defensive lineman. Mike Kerr, the former New England Patriot from the University of Florida. He looks ready. Jacksonville Jaguars drafted by Tampa in 1994 and a key role today. Yeah, he's one of the allocated guys. They're going to count on the fact that he's had some experience and some big games. Middle linebacker Tom Cavallo, a team leader. Mark <laughs> Byers here, the first round draft choice of the Galaxy. Cavallo's going to have to make an awful lot of tackles. He's got to be all around this field to get some heat. Jim Ballard, and more importantly, to stop that run of Duran Stacey. Mark Byers, University of Nevada, Las Vegas, now into the secondary. Left quarterback, number 22, Cecil Duggett. A gambler, a bit of a Kenny McIntyre, this fella, but it often works for him. Yeah, and you know, he's not that big. He's, he's only about 5'10", 180 pounds. But he's got good quicks, good feet, and good instincts out there on the field. Like you said, he is a gambler. Right quarterback, number and a real key player on this Galaxy secondary. And here's a guy coming back from last year 
This unit has had quite a few people come back. The guys wanted to defend that World Bowl championship title. There's one guy that isn't Curtis Cotton. He's coming from the Oakland Raiders. He's made the strong safety spot his own. And Johnny Dixon, five interceptions last year, four this year. the Frankfurt Galaxy starting defense. They didn't get a very warm welcome, did they? It's going to be different now. <laughs> Just listen to this. They get ready. And everybody rising to their feet at Murrayfield. Talking to a couple of players on the Scotland team before the game, just an hour before the game, I said, you up for this? They said, if you're not up for this, you're not up for anything. Oh, this is, a big, this is as big as it's going to get for you in the World League. For a lot of these guys, this will be their last shot to ever play in a game, a big game like this. I was funny talking to Scott Cooper before the game. I said, Scott, is this the biggest game you ever played? He said, no, the Super Bowl was. <laughs> he said, of course it's the biggest game I've ever played in. <laughs> but as a go-to guy with the double coverage going probably on Sean LaChapelle. That offensive line anchored at left tackle by Randy Beeman, the only one of the five who isn't NFL allocated. Here's Tom Barnes from the Kansas City Chiefs. Well, a big Purvis Hunt <laughs> from the Oilers. Purvis says three things, two things I always have in my refrigerator. A pack of ham and a six-pack. <laughs> I'm sure he meant six-pack of soda. Of course. <laughs> and he's the leader of that offensive line from the Redskins, Keith Wagner. Jim Kreiner says this guy, without a doubt, is their best offensive lineman and a leader. <laughs> primarily blocks, but can do both well. Over a thousand yards, the hero of Scotland. It'll be interesting to see how they choose to cover Sean LaChapelle. Bracketing in and out has not worked. Double coverage has not worked. They've got to come up with something new. Jim Ballard didn't start until the second half of week eight when he came on for the injured Steve Matthews. Matthews was never going to get back after that. He's been sensational. Now this guy's a good player, but he's in for the injured Jared Kayahilo, who is normally the blocker for Saran Stacey. That's, that's going to hurt them. That's a big story, too, because I don't think that he is the blocker that Jared was. In fact, I know he's not. So it'll, it'll be interesting to see how that affects that man running the football. Saran Stacey. And the last guy, Scott Cooper. What a moment for him. <laughs> Boy, you got to love that. He made a touchdown catch in Barcelona last week that had everybody saying, that's an NFL catch. Well, every time I've seen the guy play, he comes up with a big catch somehow. 
I think he's a pretty darn good football player, whether he ever gets a shot to go on from here or not. Right, so that sorts out the player introductions. We're about five minutes away from kickoff. Let's get back to Kevin and the guys in the studio. Thank you, Nick. You've seen all the starting players, but just before kickoff, here's Mike with a rundown on the key matchups in today's game. Jim Ballard has waited the better part of two seasons to get a chance to prove what many had thought. He's got big-time talent. Ballard's ability to spread the ball around resulted in eight touchdown passes in just two and a half games. But Ballard's main target continues to be Sean LaChapelle, who's proven he's got the ability to get behind anyone. LaChapelle's consistency won him the league's Offensive MVP award. Yo Murphy started to see more of the ball as soon as Ballard took over, and he's another threat, catching and running. And don't forget Scotland's own Scott Cooper. We knew Scoops had the hands, but who said he couldn't get behind DB? On the ground, Saran Stacy remains the big threat. He's the league leader in rushing. But watch out for Marcus Thomas, who may play more today and will return kicks, too. On the D, Scotland's line is hurting, but the DBs are healthy. George Coghill has made the big plays all season long. The cornerbacks are James Williams and Forey Duckett, who must play big today. Duckett had picks in both games against the Galaxy this year. Frankfurt cut James Fuller, and he's come back to haunt them. He partners Coghill in a pair of safeties who are both all-world leagues. In the kicking game, Paul McCallum has range to 54 yards, and he's cool under pressure. And local hero Gavin Hastings has felt the pressure at Murray Field. He'll be handling PAT. Frankfurt will be relieved that former Cowboy quarterback Steve Palour has got over his midseason crises and seems to be back in form. He passed for 676 yards and six touchdowns in wins over Barcelona and Amsterdam, both must-win games. He has plenty of players to help him make big plays. Mario Bailey was part of the Killer Bees last year, and he hasn't lost his sting. He caught a number of spectacular passes, including this touchdown against Barcelona. Gary the Flea Harrell may be only 5'7", but he's had some giant games. And this 90-yard TD set the stage for Frankfurt's victory over Amsterdam last week. Jay Kearney started the season well with two scoring catches in the first game of the year, and he's gone from strength to strength. When the chips are down, Kearney will respond to the big plays. He finished the regular season the same way he started, with two more touchdowns against Amsterdam. Nate Bolton is known for speed and agility and has consequently been dubbed Crazy Legs. He scored the winning touchdown in last year's World Bowl. He'll be looking to repeat that success today. Bobby Phillips has been injured most of the season but came back in spectacular style against Amsterdam, scoring this touchdown. Now fully fit, he'll play a key part in Frankfurt's own. Ever since John Baker was injured, Don Reynolds has led the Galaxy defense and become their sack king. But it was his interception of this pass last week that sealed Amsterdam's fate. And don't forget linebacker Tom Cavallo, another man to watch, and he's been impressive all year. This season, he's made first team all world league. Excellent preview. We've got just time for a forecast from each of our guests. So, Jack, who do you like and by how many? I like 21-17 Scotland, and it should really be a great game. I'd go about 28-24 Scotland. Got to get pressure on Palour. Got to have a running game if they don't to keep Palour off the field. Okay, two guys going for the Scottish Claymore. It's been it's time for the game. That's it. After 11 weeks of sweat and effort, it comes to a conclusion now. So it's hello once again to Ron Pitts and Nick Holland. The fourth World Bowl about to get underway. Remember back in 1991, it was London beating Barcelona 21 to nothing. The following year, Sacramento over Orlando in Montreal. And last year, Frankfurt in that thriller in Amsterdam. 
now Frankfurt back to defend that title again and they're on the road against Gavin Hastings and the Scottish Claymores Mario Bailey one of the two returners the other guy back deep ready for this kick is Gary Harrell this is one area right off the bat that the Claymores have to do a good job in special teams they got roasted last week in the special teams area Mario Bailey fields at about his eight gets past the first guy still on his feet and Bailey loose ball a fumble on the opening kickoff and it's going in for a Scottish touchdown what a start and it's Marcus Thomas just said special teams was going to be but, key but there is a flag wrong see what it is what a start though if this stands up I'm I, I can't understand what the discussion could be it didn't appear as though a knee was down we'll have to look at it again and see could have been a hold a clip all sorts of things happen on special teams Whatever it is, boy, it, it's a hot discussion. There is no flag on the play. It's a touchdown. No flag on the play. Touchdown. Yeah, I, I was wondering what could it have been. That was a clear strip, a fumble, and great alertness by Marcus Thomas, a running back on the kickoff coverage team, picked that ball up and scored. Now, here's the play here. I want you to watch Bailey fighting for extra yards, and this is when you're always susceptible to losing the ball right there. George Coghill with the rape on the right side. He brought his right arm down, and you talk about lucky bounces. And the extra point good from Gavin Hastings. And with 11 seconds gone of World Bowl 96, the Claymores are seven nothing up. Those are the kind of plays that they had to make in special teams. Last week, Barcelona went up and down the field on kickoff coverage, punt coverage. We talked to George, Jim Kreiner. We asked him what happened. He said, I had a couple of guys that didn't have their heart in it. They're no longer on those teams, no longer here, as a matter of fact. And we just didn't play well as a unit. And for Ernie Stoutner, that is not how you want to start out a huge game. You can't start any worse than that. But no cause for panic yet, obviously. But 24 yards on the return for Marcus Thomas. Thomas, who doesn't get much playing time because of Sir Ann Stacey, but he's hurt opposition all game, all season long, rather, with his kickoff return. And that was an even bigger one. You know, you, get a, you look at the guys at the beginning of the game, and I try to get a, a read on them as to how they're feeling. I talked to Marcus Thomas, and he does not have his bag packed at all, ready to go home. He is ready to play this game ready to win this World Bowl championship for Scott. And we're going to do it again with Gavin Hastings kicking it off. Mario Bailey feels that he's four this time. And what nerves must be going through his mind that he's down inside the 20. George Coghill, the man to trip him up again, and Jim Kreiner smiling already. Well, Steve Pallour starts in the hole already seven points down he was benched for week eight came back to the injured brand press and has been sensational ever since and if ever a calm hand were needed behind center for the Frankfurt Galaxy it's now Bender and Seibert in the backfield Pelour drops on first down goes over the middle has a man Jay Kearney who's wide open will pick up a first down Looks to try and turn the corner and is dragged out of bounds. Close to the first down yard in Parker. Corey Duckett on the stop. I think it'll be key is how they line up. How will Frankfurt come out? One thing to watch, of course, for Laura, he gets off to a fast start. They've got to get to him early. Because when he starts out slow, the team starts out slow. Defense has got to contain the best rusher in the league right now, Saran Stacy. The Galaxy about half a yard short. Right, that second down and one. Steve Pallor. Bobby Phillips is in the backfield and a flag comes in. And Steve Pallor has had a lot of trouble with exactly that. Delay of game. That's hurt him all season. Well, one thing that Ray Wilkins, the defensive coordinator for the Claymores, told us yesterday 
is that I'm going to try to make this quick World League clock, 35-second clock, work to our advantage. I'm going to show him a lot of looks, hoping he'll make checks, checks that he really doesn't have time for at the line. So, second down and six. Simon and Phillips in the backfield. Pelour swings it out to Bobby Phillips, the Minnesota Vikings player, George Coghill. Runs him out of bounds a couple of yards short. Coghill fired up. The backs and receivers will feature Bobby Phillips, I'm sure, today. And Mario Bailey, who's already featured with that uh, kickoff return fumble. Simon and Bender get the start. Phillips will see playing time. Bailey and Kearney, the wideouts, Ed Smith, the tight end, expect a lot of three and even four wide receiver sets from Frankfurt this evening. Phillips is out of the lineup. Where's Bender? The blocking back is in, along with Cybert on third and a couple for Frankfurt. Pelour drops back to pass. The pressure comes. He's got a man. Ed Smith, the tight end, will pick up about six yards ahead of Mark Sander, the middle linebacker. The offensive line for the Frankfurt Galaxy, featuring a couple of big Dallas Cowboys players, not, not bigger than the right tackle, George Hegemin, the six foot seven guy. Michael Matisse, the left guard. They're the two guys from the Cowboys. Collins Mills and Terrell Green round out the front for Frankfurt, who have a first down with their 36. They pitch it back to Simon. Simon is tripped up. Shannon Jones was there. That's a great job by the outside linebacker, 58, Shannon Jones. He comes up and makes the force, and that force clogs up the whole play. The defensive line has been really hurt with injuries. DeWitt and Webb starting on the outside. Jeff Coat and Joe O'Brien on the inside. But they lost Ty Parton for the season. They lost Herman Carroll. They released Troy Ridgely. And that offensive line really with a big job to do today. Yeah, there's a big question mark once again. Now, a timeout. Timeout. A timeout. A timeout by Steve Pallor perhaps looking in the Claymore's huddle, trying to get an idea of how they're going to match up personnel. That's what's going to be key about this game, personnel matchup. The first play of the game, it was four wide out by the Frankfurt Galaxy. That meant the Claymore's had to bring on extra DBs. They didn't do it. The next play, they went to regular people, trying to throw Jim Kreiner, Ray Wilsey, a little bit of a curveball there as to how you're going to match up to our people. One thing is for sure, the Claymores have got to get pressure, early pressure, as we said, on Pelour. Well, these fans popping and moving in the sunshine. Jim Kreiner protecting a seven-point lead. Ernie Storner looking for his team to come back. Second down and around 11 for the Frankfurt Galaxy. Pelour drops back to pass, has a lot of time, goes over the middle and it's dropped. And there's some nerves there, Jay Kearney dropped. And James Fuller, the former Frankfurt Galaxy player, went up and had a few words. Let uh, Kearney know about it. The Pelour. linebackers for the Scottish Claymores featuring Arnold Allais and Shannon Jones. We've already seen plenty of them. Emmett Waldron, the national player, will start. He'll share time with Mark Sander, the former Miami Dolphin. Yeah, that ball has to be caught. Sometimes the quarterback doesn't make necessarily good throws. That's a good throw. The receiver's got to help out Steve Pelour on that play. Third down, Pelour out of the shotgun. Pelour has a man, but it's broken up, and flags come in. And there's going to be a little bit of controversy there. Certainly the intended receiver, who was Mike Bellamy, had some contact from George Coghill before the ball arrived. So Walt Coleman will have to adjudicate. And he adjudicates against George Coghill. Pass interference, the call. Interference, defense, number 34, first down. It appeared to me as though Coghill got there a little early. Watch him, he's number 34. Frank Robertson's got the inside coverage. And watch Coggy. He looks as though he got there. Boy, I tell you, it's close. But he does get that leg just a tad bit early. So the Galaxy close to midfield. 
trying to put away that disastrous start. It goes Simon, runs up the middle, has some room there, and will pick up eight or nine yards into the Scottish defensive backfield. Well, I think James Fuller, eventually the free safety came up and made the stop. Fuller, the former Galaxy player, who's so fired up when he plays the team that cut him. George Coghill, who's played as well as anybody in the World League this year. James Williams and Forey Duckett on the corners. Eight yards for Cyber. If Frankfurt get a running game going here, it'll be very interesting. They're the worst in the league with the run. Bobby Phillips now has the ball and doesn't get a foul. Will be very close to first down yard. It's Mark Sander coming round with help from Arnold Allais. That looked like James Williams, a corner. 22 came up and made a key force on the play, making that ball dip in inside and then back outside. And all that means is time. Watch here. Watch the top of your screen. 22 Williams is going to come up and make the force. He sees the run right there now he bounces that ball in there just like that and that change of direction is too much time that means the defenders can scrape and make up the time and make play and that's exactly what they did and that's the difference in it right there one yard one inch short of the first down so that will bring up third and very short for Ernie Stortner, who knows he's got to try and get a running game going to have any chance of successfully defending that title, despite Steve Pallor and the big play threat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's how they've gotten here, the big play. The running game has completely disintegrated. Is receiver, 78. That's Craig Ritter, the former London Monarchs offensive lineman, checks in as an eligible receiver. When Bobby Phillips is your leading rusher, or second leading rusher with 49 attempts or 149 yards, you got a serious problem, because he may be your best back. Average of 65 yards, the keeper from Pelour, he only had to get about six inches at most. And I'll be very surprised if he hasn't made it, but we'll have to wait for the official adjudication. And I don't think they'll need to bring the chains out for that first down. So Steve Pelour showing that he's not been rattled and a guy that has been rattled earlier in the season had four games when he could do nothing right but he was benched he came back when brad bretz was injured and he's been red hot ever since and he's working a first down at the claymore's 40. they fake and they throw and they've got gary harrell who is pushed out of bounds by Corey duckett but that's going to be another first down and around 19 yards on the completion a nice time to come with the play action watch the play fake here on the run watch bobby phillips and that gives the separation downfield the corners are playing off i tell you you got some weapons on the perimeters harrell right there an allocated player with the giants out of howard university extremely quick can get open in his zone better than anybody the drive starting at Frankfurt's own 20. They're at Scotland's 21 on the ground. And good for about five yards. David Webb in on the stop. Webb, whose blitzing abilities could be crucial today. He's well, to stop the ball there, stop the ball carrier. 68, Batiste coming down. Watch the blocking up front. 65, Coleman, right off the bat. There's a huge hole. The, the Claymore defensive line slanting all to the right side. Frankfurt can get a run going. That will be a big, big factor in this game. And they have been running it. They do the reverse to Jake Kearney. Kearney with blockers, with a lot of blockers, could go. Touchdown, Frankfurt. What a response. <laughs> Did you see who threw the block? The key block, Steve Pallor, the fans fight over the ball there. The quarterback makes a great block on the reverse. Boy, nice call there. Lou Carpenter, the offensive coordinator for the Frankfurt Galaxy, come with the run, the run, the run, when everybody expects you to pass. And about the time you got the run down, now he comes with a reverse wide receiver reverse to the opposite side of the field and an excellent drive that nearly seven minutes worth ralph kleinman will attempt to tie it up he's missed a couple his field goals have been average at best and the crowd trying to put him off as well the kick on its way no problem we're tied up at murrayfield seven apiece Jay Kearney on a 21-yard reverse. 
Boy, a lot of pressure on this Claymore's defense today. Here's the reverse here. Kearney's going to come back to the left side of the field. But I want you to watch the block by the quarterback, number 16, Pallor. Yes, that's that tail end of it right there. Looks as though he put David Webb right down on the ground. That's a 250-pound defensive lineman. Well, we expected Webb and Pallor to be meeting together. Here's a better uh, look at it. Watch 16, Pallor. Look at this. Good block. Boy, you're going to get big points back home for that one. <laughs> and David Webb, knows that's one he's not going to want to look at on the film tomorrow. You let a quarterback put you down like that. So Jay Kearney has leveled it up for Frankfurt. We're back after this. You're watching Sky Sports 2. How can such rich, thick, muller light really be a low-fat yogurt? Anything's possible. Muller Light. From Muller. Who else? There are five flavor experiences in every pack of Jolly Ranchers. Sweet. <laughs> If your business partner is surprised that you choose this luxury sports saloon, have you got the right business partner? I will. Ralph Kleinman gets the action underway. Marcus Thomas gets his hands on the ball for the second time in the game. They, fake, they give the reverse to Yo Murphy, and it doesn't fool the Galaxy. Murphy stopped at the 20-yard line. Thomas should have gone ahead and kept the ball. Cecil Doggett on the stop. So, here's the reverse one more time. I want you to watch the blocking of two guys. The quarterback, 16, will watch 65 Collins downfield. Look at that, he's waving, he's waving for Kearney to come on. Corey Duckett, he's gonna have no shot. This big 65 Collins standing in front of him. Ernie Stoutner, boy, that's a big sigh of relief there after the way that game started out for him. They're back on track, back on level terms. What can Jim Ballard do now? Jim Ballard has a lot of time and has a man, Willie Tate, who spins past the first guy and will be close to first down yardage. Good second effort from the man from the Kansas City Chiefs. Jim Ballard, in two and a half games, has been simply sensational. Eight touchdowns and a couple of interceptions. A guy that was cut by the London Monarchs last season, remember, but has proved that he can play at this level and possibly at a much higher level as well. That's a case where the rush has got to get there. He had more than four seconds to throw the ball. Quarterback should only have about three seconds firm. But that's just patience, that's experience, and finding your open man. Dickerson and Stacy in the backfield. The pitch back is to Saran Stacy, who is tripped up by the middle linebacker, Tom Caballo, after a gain of about three yards. Stacy, so important to this Claymore's offense. He's been the main man for two seasons. That's been one of the things they're going to have to watch, this Frankfurt team. They're going to have to watch Stacy, LaChapelle, Jim Ballard. Those three guys make it all work for the Claymores on offense. The defense for the Claymores cannot give up the big pass play. They've got to keep those wide receivers limited to intermediate routes. Don't give up that big, huge bomb that gets everybody fired up. Ballard has a man. It's Sean LaChapelle, who is always dangerous. And LaChapelle picks up around 12 yards. Carter and Doggett on the stop, but uh, the first catch of the ball game for the most valuable player in the World League offensively this year. Look at the distance that's being given to LaChapelle. You can bet when a DB is going to play off nine yards, they're just going to turn around and take what you give them, a quick stop route and let them do the rest. 
La Chapelle goes in motion on the ground. Stacy plows his way through for three or four yards before he's gang tackled. Stacy, one of three key players. Ballard being another one. And Sean LaChapelle, the other. Scott Cooper, the wide receiver. As the national player who's going to play a wide out, Joe Murphy will share time with him. Willie Tate, the tight end. Second down and six. Seven apiece here at the World Bowl. The swing pass after the play action can't find Saran Stacey. So that'll bring up third down and six. And it has to be said the Scottish Claymores have benefited from a big and powerful offensive line. The key point perhaps of which has been they've all been healthy all season long. Beerman, the only guy not allocated from the NFL. Barnes has been from the Chiefs, Zeno from the Rams, Hunt from the Oilers, and Wagner, the spiritual leader of that group from Washington. And a third down and six for the Scottish Claymores. Ballard drops back to pass. Pump fakes gets hit. Goes down. The ball's out. The ball is loose. And who's recovered that? Don Reynolds gets the pressure inside. They came with the blitz. Both linebackers came. Tom Cavallo, 53. Bernard Carter was in there. Well, the good news for the Claymores is that they recovered the ball, so Paul McCallum will come out. But this is a great play from Reynolds. Look inside there. There's 50 Carter. There's 53 Cavallo. And 71, Tom Bart, a Chiefs allocated player, does not hold Reynolds. He gets him on the outside and gets the sack. Paul McCallum with a shallow kick and a flag comes in. Gary Harrell fields at his own 24-yard line and has some room to work in as well. All the way up to the 38. But the officials are going to have something to say about that play. But certainly any Scotland fans that thought this was going to be a one-sided blowout, I think realize we're going to be in a game here. Frankfurt have come to play. Well, Frankfurt... And, and this guy's not going to be intimidated by a crowd, is he, Ernie? Frankfurt did what they had to do. They had to answer to that fluke play in the beginning of the game. If they don't come down the field and answer, I think mentally the players are going to go in a tank. And that is a credit to Ernie to keep everybody strong and tight on the sideline. Meanwhile, the flag is being sorted out. Offside. Defense, number 39, five-yard penalty, repeat fourth down. So they're going to have to play it again. The last gun. The backup strong safety took a jump. So that makes it fourth down and nine. So McCallum will punt it away again, which is just as well for the Claymores because Harrell had given Frankfurt pretty decent <laughs> field position. Not a good kick from McCallum. But Harrell is such a dangerous guy back there. Little, quick, can run. Perfect to punt returner. They're trying to come after the, the punter there. And a fair catch called for. That was a much better kick from Paul McCallum. And it's fielded at the 20-yard line. So the penalty effectively cost the Galaxy 18 yards. But it's Frankfurt who will have the ball when we return to Murrayfield. IBF Intercontinental Light Welterweight title action. Tuesday night at 8, live on Sky Sports. Well, this is the best of feasts, bar none. <laughs> that right, it is bar none. No feast bar, not at all. Here's one luscious ice cream, chocolatey biscuity bits, and even more toffee gooeyness. And now it's 10% bigger. Well, you don't have to take that sort of stick, young man. You're right. Walt's feast bar, the feast bar none, and no stick. Show a little spirito di punto. Check the mirror. Too close. Too mirror, I, I'm, mirror. I'm looking at my mirror. Signal. Great driver. Spirito di punto. Now we look 
at this game so far, turnovers are a big key, which is talked about, but it's always something that always comes up. We have an excellent replay of that kickoff where they lost the ball. Got Scotland did a good job of coming up with it. Well, you don't want here, you, as a running back, you don't want to be dancing. Get the ball, get upfield, make one or two cuts, and then get it going. Now, he's coming up in here, and to watch him start to slow down and start to dance, look out, buddy, you're going to get stripped. So are you, in this situation, are you telling the defensive players to attack the football? Absolutely, absolutely. See, George Coghill had a clean, a clean shot at it. He just moved his arm around from behind and had it. Oh, okay, now, here it is. Uh, welcome back. Nico Seibert, the German national player, has just carried the ball for about eight yards. <laughs> and well, this Scottish defense getting pushed around a little bit on the ground. Well, what's amazing about all this is no Galaxy running back has gone over 50 yards rushing in one game. The, lo the longest run of the year is a quarterback, Brad Brett, 22 yards. And here you see him establishing some kind of running game. A Pelour on second and short, back to pass, and it's broke. Mike Bellamy should have had it edit. Waldron came in and hit Bellamy with that a catchable ball. Claymores will play a lot of zone trying to defend from that big pass play that the Frankfurt Galaxy do a lot of. And you see the linebackers getting decent drops and breaking on the football. That's what you teach. Watch the quarterback get your feet moving and now break and react to the throw. Third down and three for Frankfurt. Pelour out of the shotgun. Pelour goes down, John Joe O'Brien. No, he's not down. He didn't go down and he's smart play. O'Brien put all kinds of pressure on. Pelour saw him at the last second and picked up the first down. That's veteran experience for you. Well, that's just a lot of guts in the pocket. Look on the right side here, big George Hegeman working on O'Brien. O'Brien beats him around the corner. For all intents and purposes, that's a sack. But Pelor very alert and being alert and feeling things. He couldn't see what was behind him. He just felt the presence and got out of there. Started well here, Steve Pelor. That's ominous for Scotland. Back to pass again. Play action. And Tony Harrison is wide open on the sidelines. Corey Duckett was beaten all ends up. 12 yards and another first down for Frankfurt. And Steve Pelour running the show here. I would expect pretty soon for the Claymore's defense to start tightening up. They're playing off. The cornerbacks are playing very deep, very soft. Expect them to start moving up because they're getting picked on underneath. But like we said earlier, they don't want to give up that big pass play. And there are so many players in that Galaxy receiving core that are capable of a big play. Jake Kearney is split wide to the left. He's already scored on a reverse. They pitch it back to Ingo Cyber. Cyber looks to turn the corner, has blockers as well, and will pick up five yards before running into James Williams. Encouraging stuff this for Frankfurt. Boy, what a switch here. Now, the strategy is from Lou Carpenter, the offensive coordinator for Frankfurt, if he can get the Claymores to get into an eight-man front situation, situation to give them to bring George Coghill up the field, now they're going to be in single coverage, no help down the field. Then he can get that big pass on him. Five more yards for Cyber. Brings up second and five. On the ground again to the German national who stopped short, ran into Mark Sander after a gain of about three. Emmett, Ball, Emmett Waldron was in there. But he goes, Simon, I had a chat with him just about half an hour before the kickoff and uh, asked him if he was fully fit because this guy has paid the price with his body this season and he said he's ready to rumble. Full of confidence, believes in himself. Four touchdowns this year as well. Not a passenger on this team by any stretch of the imagination. Third down and one. And they stay on the ground with Simon again, who prowls his way in, and it'll be close. Emmett Waldron in there on the stop. Looked like Simon got enough, but they may have to pull the, pull the chains out. One reason that the Galaxy is able to open up some holes up front, they go about 300 pounds across the board. In fact, the lightest guy is Toby Mills, the center, at 295. That time, they're running right over Michael Batiste, 68, one of the allocated players from Dallas. He goes 300. Terrell Green on the other side goes 308. Cybert again doesn't get much this time. He runs into Emmett Waldron and Arnold Allais, but they're in Scotland territory. 
But it makes sense. Why not run if you're going to run your leading rusher? And that's the national player, Ingo Seibert. 72 carries in the season, 164 yards to date. But you know what? He might go over 100 today if he keeps up this pace. Well, Frank, but average 65 yards on the ground per game. They're already over 50 here. Ballour now drops back to pass. Nice mix-up. They've got Gary Harrell, who can't quite get it. That was overthrown. Corey Duckett arrived a little late, but Harrell had no chance. But they're mixing up the run of the pass very effectively here. Uh, this is this is what you call a boxing match where the contender's coming out and throwing some good left jabs, and he's keeping them away. And they're just going to buy their time for that big right hook. Well, the wily old fox would have been concerned when that kickoff return fumble went in. And that will do it for the first that quarter. That is the end of the first quarter. Eventful end and exciting. Quarter. And at the end of it, the two teams are locked together at seven apiece. Right, now let's go down onto the sidelines and find out what Gia Milinovic is up to. Gia. Well, I've got two injury reports for the Claymores. They're minor injuries, but they're fairly important. Sean LaChapelle, who's just walked off, has been complaining of groin strain. He's been taped up. He seems all right. He's been doing a bit of stretching. Also, Siren Stacy has been complaining of a twisted ankle. The physio gave him some painkillers, so hopefully those two will be all right. That's it for me down here. Back upstairs to you, Kev. Hey, hey Gia. Good job there. Two guys, two <laughs> main guys that uh, for the Claymores, but they've only been for, in for one series so far. Well, that's right, and, and Saran Stacy running is really the key to the Claymores' offense. Every game, if he carries the ball 15, 20 times a game, they win because you have to come up, and then the receivers kill you. If he's hurt, then they're in a lot of trouble. Hey, now, we want to look at it, one on the flip side of it. The Galaxy have had the ball for 90% of the first quarter. To me, the player of the game so far has to be the quarterback, uh, Pelor. He's doing the job when he has to. What Scotland was doing, they need the rush on him, and they're not getting it. And he's getting time to throw. Now, here's the TD. It's the reverse to Kearney, the, coming around the side. There's Palouer's block on Dave Webb. Look at Collins, 65, who's looking for somebody. Kearney just outruns the linebacker, and Collins just pushes Forey Duckett out of the way. Forey Duckett doesn't want any part of that. And Kearney gets that. But it, it's interesting the way they're mixing up the plays. Good call on that stage. A great call. And any call though good in the end zone is a good call. <laughs> <laughs> hey, let's get ourselves back to the stadium. Well, Tiger Feet getting on down on the sidelines. The fun bunch leading the dance. These guys have had fun all season long. <laughs> yeah, right down in front of us. They wanted Ron Pitts to join them. Ron said, I'm not wearing a kilt. Spoils court. Third and long. And they go to the four wide receiver package. Gary Harrell goes in motion. Six DBs in for Scotland. Pelour, shotgun. Has time. Swings it out. And it was read all away by Arnold Alley. And that'll lose three yards. And he goes cyber, the ball carrier. The defense holding firm. That was a nice job of coverage downfield. They really never had anything, and I think the whole play was planned to go to Siebert in the beginning. You see nothing downfield. They start off in the trips formation, and Arnold Allais doing a good job of staying at home, as they say. Kevin Fury from the Panthers with an excellent kick. Marcus Thomas is having nothing to do with it. I don't think Marcus really knew where he was. He's on the two-yard line pair catching a ball. He's got to let that one go. Well, Marcus Thomas normally handles kickoff returns. He's only handling punt returns because Lee Gissenday yeah. got injured. Yeah. But it showed. So the Claymores will take over deep in their own territory when we get back in a couple of moments. Sky Sports 2. A type of beetle has evolved that, while it looks like any other beetle, a more 
powerful muscle structure under its shell. And the only giveaway is a tiny marking on its rear. There are five flavor experiences in every pack of Jolly Ranchers. Sweet. <laughs> Welcome back. We have a ball game here. Score tied 7-7. In a big game like this, turnovers turn, seem to be big, but mental errors are just as big as turnovers. They really are. Just an example of the punt return. Anything inside the 10-yard line, wave your fair catch and then let it go and get out of the way. And here's a guy that hasn't been down there all that much, and he's, he's, a little, he's lost where he is on the field. Wave it and get away from it. It'll bounce in the end zone. But that, any, that hurts. Is there anybody that would be in that situation who should be talking to him? No, he's got to make that decision. But the guy, the guy next to him should be saying, let it go, let it yeah, go. So he should, and he needs to know where he is. And it, it costs him 17 yards. Okay, let's get back to the stadium. Back at Murrayfield, the 1996 World Bowl. Scotland 7, Frankfurt 7. Early second quarter, Nick Halling along with Ron Pitt. Ron, I think we've been very impressed with Frank Bird on both sides of the ball so far. Yeah, and right now, I think Claymores have a big problem. They're backed up in their own territory. Dickerson and Stacy in the backfield. Jim Ballard working from his own two-yard line. And they're looking for something up the middle with Saran Stacy, And it's only worth a couple of yards. And they, they really shouldn't be this deep, really. Uh, well, Marcus Thomas, like you said, he's not used to catching punts. And what happens is any ball that goes inside the 10, you're supposed to let that ball go. Never, ever, ever feel the ball inside the 10, especially if it's inside the 10 and inside the 5. He feels that ball on the 2. Marcus Thomas, who scored that opening Scotland touchdown. So I guess he's kind of balanced his books. Ballard, back to pass. That's time. Just manages to get rid of it before he was leveled and he had to throw it away. Great pressure coming from the outside of Ballard heard it. Run, run, Wolfork. That right in position causing an awful lot of drama today. That's the second time he has been in the backfield and put Ballard on the ground. I think the Claymores are a little shocked right now. Number one, they didn't expect Frankfurt to run the ball like they've run it. Number two, they didn't expect them to be, get this kind of pressure on Ballard. Ballard's a cool customer, but he still needs time to throw like everybody else. And a third and seven from here. They need a few more yards to give McCallum some help. Ballard passes over the middle. La Chapelle was the man who was looking And La Chapelle's hurt. No La Chapelle's hurt. Oh, he's twisted he, his knee or something because he's still on the ground. Oh, boy, I tell you, that, that's huge. It's disastrous for Scotland if this guy can't go. And any time you see a fella going over without anyone touching him, you know it's bad. And, you know, that's the one thing, watching him lay down there right now, that's the one thing you never want to talk about, especially with an allocated guy who had a great performance to get injured. It looked as though leg. it looked as though to be something with the leg, and it looked as though he heard it coming out of the break. I don't know if it's a cramp, a pull. It's definitely some kind of problem right it, up it, high it there. Doesn't, it looked as though he was pulling up before he finished coming out of his break. And like I said, that's a shame. A guy that's had the kind of year. Watch him here. Now, right about here, he looks like he pulls up. See, he took a half step there on that left leg, another half step, and then he just goes down. I don't want to speculate as to what that could be. Well, all he can say for sure, La Chapelle, is you hope it's not too serious. Claymore's leading back in this game. He's 
been really one of the stars. A guy that came in and broke the single season receiving yardage record that was formerly held by Eddie Brown of Sacramento. Just sensational. And he burned everybody, Ron. There wasn't, there wasn't one defense that ever found a way to stop this guy. <laughs> Uh, and they're going to take him right in. It did, didn't look like he twisted anything. And I'm talking about knee or ankle. It's hard to say. Well, now that's huge. It is huge. That's real huge because now Yo Murphy becomes the go-to guy. And Scott Cooper's going to play the whole game. And Scott Cooper's going to play the whole game, which I don't think is a, is a bad thing at all because Scott Cooper is very productive every time he's in the game. I think the tight end, Willie Tate, a guy we talked about the other day, Nick, that doesn't get a lot of balls thrown his way, I think they gotta get him into the game. Will they be patient? Will they continue to be patient with their run games? Well, they do have another option, Derek Hill, who's just joined from Amsterdam. Meanwhile, Paul McCallum, and they came after him. Oh, and he went down. Only just got it away. The Gary Harrell fields at the Scotland 38 and is down all the way to the 30-yard line. Harold so dangerous. I'm not sure that they didn't rough the kicker on that play. Let's watch McCallum here. Uh, that was a pretty good job of acting. He fooled me from up here. I was going to say. He's got it down. Paul McCallum making a very good job of going down like he'd been shot with the officials having none of it and now Frankfurt have a first down deep in Scotland territory Phillips and Bender in the backfield Kalur to throw that'll bring up a second down and ten but time for the Scottish defense to really step up and we talked about their defensive line and those injured guys that they're missing right that's right Ty Parton Herman Carroll Two big-time players for him inside. They're not there. They've had to make up with what they've had. And I don't think it's the same kind of guys up front. I know that Ty Parton is considered a make for most NFL teams. He's a marquee player. When you lose somebody like that, you lose a lot of push inside. Hello. With a lot of time looking for Mario Bailey. Got it. Run. Popped it up. Now, are they going to say had it? No. Incomplete. Corey Duckett was there and looks like he did just enough. You don't often see Mario Bailey to let, it, let anyone go like that. That's rare. Well, I'm just surprised at the time he has to throw the ball. Poor Corey Duckett. He's out there all alone. Watch the patience of Corey Duckett. He doesn't look back until he knows that ball is thrown. And that's a good job of getting the ball out. The receiver didn't have possession. Excellent job from Duckett. Brings up third set. Palua, shotgun. Four wide receivers out. Palour gets hit by Gerald Jeffco, gets it off, and it's caught by Gary Harrell. The ball was tipped up in the air by David Wilson. He couldn't hang on. Harrell could to the one. What a play. Steve Palour took a hit on the play, but somehow Harrell comes up with it. That's just one of those things. Watch the hit that Pallor takes from 99 Jeffcoat. He breaks the double team. And this here is just football, folks. David Wilson has got to catch the ball. First and goal. They give to Bobby Finnich, who's met and hit. John DeWitt, the first man there. Joe O'Brien was there, too. So, too, was Emmett Waldron. And it's second and goal. A loss of a yard on the play brings up second and goal at the two. Well, the Scottish defence will be happy to get out of this with a field goal against them. They stay on the ground. Bobby Phillips can't get anywhere. Mark Sander draped all over it. Duckett came up and helped. Mark Sander has got to be the guy, second leading tackler on the team that makes the plays right now. He's the linebacker inside. He'll be standing in the end zone. He can see everything. And another guy that's playing hurt. Didn't yeah. play much about Yeah, him. along with George Coggle, didn't play hurt. Well, you couple those injuries with a defensive line 
that doesn't have the same personnel they had at the beginning of the year. And it can be touch and go. The man of the running game got back to the pass out of the shotgun. Harold in motion. Kalur looks, has a man. Touchdown. Oh, Frankfurt. what a catch. What a catch. Mario Bailey. And flags come in yeah, very he's, late. He's going to get a flag for taunting, unsportsmanlike conduct. That's right. He can't spike the ball in the DB's face. And as a former TV, I'm going to agree with that rule. <laughs> New defensive backs. That's what it is, but it doesn't matter. The play will count. They'll put it on the kickoff. Great effort by Bailey going up and getting the ball. We have unsportsmanlike conduct, taunting on the receiver. We'll penalize that 15 yards on the kickoff. Touchdown. Well, two plays. They tried to run it on Scotland. Couldn't do it. But with four wide receivers in, Palour managed to find Mario Bailey. And Ralph Kleinman with the extra point. And timeout's called. Cool. Evan Waldron saw something. And I'll tell you something else Thanks, that's going on in this stadium that's very much in the favor. All start prior to the snap, number 78. Five yard penalty. That's Craig Ritter. Right tackle. For the London Monarch. Have to get those Monarchs in there somewhere, you know. <laughs> I know you like that. <laughs> One thing that's in favor of the Frankfurt Galaxy right now, the crowd is out of this game. It is a very quiet stadium, Nick. They were rocking. Marcus Thomas ran in that fumble. Lineman with a much longer extra point. No problem at all. And with 10 21 remaining in the first half of World Bowl 96, the Frankfurt Galaxy have overcome a wretched start to take a 14 to 7 lead over the Scottish Claymores, courtesy of Mario Bailey. Gee, a good looking out. But one of the guys who has taken over a little receiver, the littlest guy on the field, Harold, Harold the Fleet. Yeah, and it's funny because we talked about how every time Scotland's been beaten, they've been beaten on freak plays. And this is a freak play. David Wilson goes up to take the interception, and it goes right through his hand. Harold gets it. Bailey and it's fielded by Marcus Thomas they fake to Yo Murphy Thomas with a bit of a hole to run in but only to the 43 yard line here's a look at the touchdown once again just a pretty good job of going up and getting the ball by Bailey He's already in the shotgun floor. Is he just going to take two steps and throw it up? That's a fade. Now it's up to the receiver to find the ball. And the key there is that 
22, Williams has had his back turned. Watch this. He's not really sure when the ball's coming. By the time he turns, the ball's up. And that is just a great catch. It's a pretty good job of coverage. He's right where he's supposed to be. Six plays, 30 yards. Stacy not getting much. Maybe a couple. And Stacy, worth pointing out again that he's missing his number one blocker, Jared Kayahilo. Ron Dickerson is in there to try and fulfill that role, and he's not the blocker that Kayahilo was. Now, Dickerson, 6'1", 228. He's got the meat, but he is not the guy that puts fear in a linebacker's heart coming around the corner. Well, Stacy traditionally starts slow, but then comes on strong when it matters. So the Scots won't give up on him just yet. Two yards for Saran there. Ballard pitches it back. Stacy finds a swarming defense in front of him and a fumble That's a ball. fumble and it looks like the Galaxy have got it The second effort from Stacy was too much and the Galaxy have come up with it Or have they? We'll have to wait for confirmation Boy the Galaxy they got some stuff going on down there the Galaxy lining up in a very stacked 43 defense in other words saying Go ahead and try to run the ball. We're not worried about your passing. We're going to stop your run. And that's exactly what they did. But a penalty goes against the Frankfurt Galaxy. Look like a clip. But what are they going to say? Who's got the ball? It looks like the Galaxy have got the ball. But the clip came after the recovery, but we'll have to wait for confirmation. It's a legal. An illegal forward pass oh. during the return of the interception. Number 53, a five-yard penalty, and first down. Cavallo tried to illegally lateral the ball. But he knew he was going to get tackled, so that was, that's what the penalty's for. Boy, it, it's getting crunch time now for Scotland in the sense that they came out and they had the big play in the beginning of the game but they have not stopped anything Frankfurt's done on offense. And they are stuttering and sputtering on offense themselves. And their defense is spending a lot of time out on the field. That's key. That's a great point. They're tired. I'm out. Starting. That's our first team timeout. And a chance to regroup, perhaps, for the Scottish Claymores for whom not much has gone right after that opening kickoff was fumbled by Frankfurt and Marcus Thomas returned it. So it's 14-7 to the visitors from Frankfurt and they have the ball when they return. You're watching Sky Sports 2. Any luxury car will make a statement about you. But why settle for a cliché? It's All Sports' biggest ever big sale, and it's on now. Big savings on big brands, up to 50% off selected items. All Sports, it's not your average sale. Well, my little boy's already been admitted to the Halford School for Gifted Children. After that, we we'll Cambridge. Well, we've put this little one into the fencing club, which is the real secret of getting into the sore box. Harris. Mike's going into the diplomatic service, and he's already down for Latin, ancient Greek, Aramaic, Judah, information technology. Every day, our systems and services help carriers and immigration authorities meet their commitments. ICL, information technology, supporting your way of life. good football game so far but Jack what is the difference between these two teams well right now Scotland nothing's working nothing's flowing for them and they, and they just need an opportunity to run their regular attack and, and there's plenty of time and they're not out of it very far so I, I would say there's plenty of time for Scotland yeah okay back to the stadium <laughs> to Murrayfield, Steve Ballour leading the Frankfurt Galaxy. Very effectively, the Galaxy recovering from that slow start. Ingo Seibert gets the pitch back, runs into his own man, and we drop for a loss. The ball pops up, but after 
Seibert was down. Shannon Jones coming up from outside linebacker. And we saw Ray Wilsey in the commercial break there really just talking very firmly to his defense. Yeah, I think he's giving him one of those, all right, you better get your stuff together talks. Because this, this is not funny anymore. And it's not funny. They are having a hard time stopping this offense. And this offense is doing something they weren't supposed to be able to do, and that's run the ball. They've mixed it up very effectively, the Galaxy. Pelour back to pass this time. Good protection. Over the middle. And another kick ball. David Wilson with his second of the game. In big games, your players have to step up and make big plays, especially when it's tight. David Wilson has let two balls go through his hands right now, and that is not how you stay on an NFL team or get to an NFL team. Pelour's going to let this one float up. This is a nice cheese ball here. He's got to grab this one and go the other way. Easy to say from up here, Rob, but that really well, should have been. I tell you what, I've been down there, and it's easy to say wherever you're at. He's got to catch that ball. You're not going to convince that scout back home that he should have caught that ball. <laughs> Third down and long. Bellamy, the motion man. Pelour from the shotgun. Gets pressure. Gets it off. Incomplete. Joe O'Brien and Jason Buck managing to put a bit of heat on Steve Pallor, and that's crucial for the Claymores. Yeah, Jason Buck, a guy just came in. That, of course, is the Jason Buck that played with the Cincinnati Bengals and the Washington Redskins. Back, going back to the almost interception. No way. No way. You know, that's one reason coaches talk about pocket catching, catching it with your chest, cradling the ball to make the short catch. Low snap for uh, Kevin Fury to deal with. No chance for a return for Marcus Thomas who gets out of the way of it. Oh. Once again, the Galaxy going to have an excellent field position. Tony Harrison downs it at about the three-yard line. So Ray Wilsey's defense stiffening up when it had to there. The former London Monarchs head coach for the offense has been bogged down. They've done nothing. Well, and now you've got your big gun out. Sean LaChapelle, where do you go? Saran Stacy has got yeah, to run the ball. the ball. He's got to be a receiver now. Tate's got to figure into the game more. Well, and, like we, and like we said, Yo Murphy, they got to start pushing him. Well, the Claymores have enjoyed a lot of success at Murray Field this season, unbeaten. But you know, the bad news for the Claymores, Amsterdam were unbeaten at home last year until Frankfurt rode into town in the World Bowl. That could be ominous. First down. They pitch it back to Saran Stacey, who's going nowhere Nothing. fast. Chris Hall coming up from corner. They strung Stacey out. And that'll be second down and around eight. And the man from the University of Alabama is not getting much in this first half. Uh, and field position has been the key. The Galaxy have been able to put Scotland back, back deep, where all they could do was run the ball to get out of there. And now with LaChapelle out of the game, the run is even more important for him. Second down and seven. Cooper, the national player, in motion. Ballard with time. Has a man. The tight end, Willie Tate, coming up with an important catch that will move the chain. Cecil Doggett was beaten. Curtis Cock on the stop. But they needed that just to get out of their own end zone. That's a nice little play there, putting Scott Cooper in motion. He's kind of a, uh, a screen, more or less. Watch how he's going to try to pick in here and cause commotion. I think that was a little bit of vision loss by the linebacker covering Tate, and then, of course, Doggett slips and helps the separation for the completion. So, first down, Jim Ballard with a deep drop over the middle. Has a man, Yo Murphy, will pick up around five yards. Tom Cavallo, the middle linebacker on the stop, and Murphy is the guy that's got to step up in the absence of Sean LaChapelle. It's funny, the score doesn't show it, but up to this point, the Claymores have been manhandled a little bit by the Galaxy, and they need this drive to go down and show them that we are here in this championship game for a reason. Yo Murphy's checked out of the lineup. Derek Hill, the former Admiral, has checked in at the top of the screen. On second down, now Cooper in motion to the same side, and they run the play to Saran Stacey, who runs straight into Tom Cavallo, who stayed at home 
Stacy may have picked up three yards, and that'll bring up third down and a couple for the Scottish Claymores. And as you say, Ron, if you take away that fumble on the opening kickoff, Scotland have nothing That's to show. They, for they don't have anything, right? You can't look at this score. In big games like these, boy, you don't want to get down by more than 14 because the emotions are so high and so high strung that it, people can go into the tank on them. Frankfurt, a team very good at defending the lead. Ballard dumps it off. Nice play to Saran Stacey, who's done enough to get a first down and more. Frank Messmer, the German national player, eventually on the stop, but Stacey with the first down, and more importantly, hanging on to the ball as well. Well, I tell you, Saran Stacey leads the World League in just about every category, rushing all-purpose yards, single-game rushing touchdowns. He's a guy that has come up for him. Look at the patience by Jim Ballard. Doesn't see what he wants downfield. Now, the second effort here, dragging the players, surround Stacy. To the 45. On the ground again, Stacy juggles the ball. He's got it and picks up around five yards before he's stopped by Tom Cavallo. Cavallo and Stacy having quite a tussle out there. <laughs> Well, Cavalli, he should. He's the leading tackler. He's a player that's bounced around quite a bit. British Columbia Lions. It's like a fancy dress party coming to this game, wasn't it, Ron? I think we yeah. you guys in here without faces painted. Yeah. Second and five. They keep it on the ground again. Stacy runs into trouble. Maybe picks up a couple. Not a lot. Mark Byers at the bottom of the heap with the stop. But now the Claymores looking to do what they do best, which is run the ball in their opponent's throats. Yeah, well, they need to do this. They need to get a score before the half here. <laughs> well, we said, we said Frankfurt don't run the ball very much, but Saran Stacey alone has wiped them out this year. Three and a half minutes left. First half. Cooper, the motion man. They fake. He's got Stacey. Cooper. And it almost picked up another drop ball. And Ballard had Cooper. Chris Hall should have had a pick. That's the first bad decision I've seen by Jim Ballard. He waited two seconds too long to throw that ball. Scott Cooper had come in motion and made a great play and was wide open. All he had to do was throw the ball. Cooper's open right now on the top left hand of your screen. There he is. Now he throws the ball late and he underthrows it. Because Doug Atwood, or, or Chris Hall was out of position about two steps earlier. Paul McCallum with the kick. And it's down at about the 10 yard line by Marcus Thomas. So the Frankfurt Galaxy will have just under three minutes remaining in this first half to try and punish the Claymores a little bit more. So disappointing that on third down for Scotland. Right, that's another lost battle for Scotland. They needed to go down and at least get three out of that. The only thing that they have in their favor here is that they've got the Galaxy backed up. So now I would expect defensively to see some blitzing, to see some movement. But if you're the Galaxy, I'm going to run that ball out of there. I'm going to go after a defensive front who I don't think is playing as well as they, as, as they could play and have played in the beginning of the year. Z Phillips and Fender in the backfield for the Galaxy. Pelour has pressure, goes down. And that's an important play for Brian Proby. Huge. They've got to pressure Steve Pelour, and that was an eight-yard loss. Proby, an allocated player with the Chiefs, number 67. He'll be on the left side of your screen. Just takes Terrell Green and throws him to the side. Boy, that is a huge play, and Terrell Green has got to be stronger inside the net. I mean, he just wiped him out. Pelour has no chance. He's set. And then has to take the and try and run out of it with Bobby Phillips, who works behind the blockers and will get close to the five-yard line. Boy, and that, that's why you don't want to pass the ball too many times out of that end of the field. You get a sack, somebody misses a block, a whiff as they call it, 
like Terrell Green had right there. And now you're really backed up. And now you got third and forever. They may just want to play it safe, get a completion, get the punter some more room, and then get that ball out of there. And the clock has ticked down to two minutes remaining in the first half. Scotland facing a big third and 15 for protecting that seven-point lead. We'll be back. Two minutes left in the first half. The Galaxy have that 14 to 7 lead, and the reason is because of things just not going right, right for the Claymores, especially this play here. And the big thing is that they're giving Pluer time, and I want you to watch right here. Watch Collins on DeWitt, and watch that hand. Watch that hand there and what he does. They're giving Pluer time any, any way they can, and there's a lot of holding going on. You see that hand there, that left hand? Yeah. But Pluer, now the ball's wobbly, and David Wilson goes up and Jack, what did you say about defensive backs? <laughs> well, the reason they're playing defense and not offense, they can't catch, you know, <laughs> more often than not. But uh, they need to make that play, at least knock the darn thing down. And then and twice. And here, do you work this play against Williams because of the size factor? Well, Mario Bailey's only five foot nine. He doesn't have size on anybody. But I'd throw to Mario Bailey. I don't care who's guarding him because one on one, he'll catch the ball. He gets himself into position. Watch. He makes room for himself. He, he times his leap. So he's got it all the way. He never gives Williams a chance. All right, now, in this situation here, we can look at it again from another angle. Well, it was a good job by Plur. I mean, he, he, he's he been in that situation so many times. It's a fade route. He knows he's got one-on-one -on -one coverage. The guy makes a play. As long as that ball's to the outside, Mario Bailey's going to keep his body between Williams and, and the ball, and he's going to make the catch. All right, okay, now, they have the ball on the five-yard line. Here, the ball is on the five-yard line. Move, moving up the field, what, do, what happens from here? Here's a sack. Yeah, now this is Brian Proby, 67, just coming right in. Look at him pushing forward. He pushes Terrell Green back, and when Terrell Green's trying to get his balance back, he still makes the next step and goes through. This is the key now. I mean, this is an important sack, but uh, Scotland's got to get the ball back in good field position and come down and make something happen. If, if not a touchdown, at least a field goal. It's only 14-7, and they're not playing well. And you see what Terrell Green did is both hands gave him a big shove, trying to get him not just knock him over, but Proby wasn't going off his game. Pitch. Two minutes remaining in the first half of World Bowl 96. Frankfurt leading Scotland 14 to 7, but with a third and 15 from their own five yard line. And for Scotland in particular, this play is huge. Palua takes his time, tries to fake defender, goes up. He's there. got a man. He's got a man, and he's just overthrown oh. Mario Bailey, who ripped James Williams. <laughs> James Williams thought when we talked to him a few days ago that I would be the guy they go after and he was right. Palure thought he was going to have less time to throw than he actually had. But Bailey just blows him away. Anytime as a corner you get turned in the other direction like that, that is not good for your technique and your and your paycheck. That's something that may come back later on. Fiery punts from his own end zone. Marcus Thomas fields uh -oh. at midfield and is trouble. Fumble the ball. Lucky for Thomas. Somebody was there to recover. It's David Wilson. And Wilson's still on his feet to the 40 and stays on his feet all the way to the 38-yard line where we trash David Wilson for a couple of interceptions he should have made. But that was a smart play. <laughs> And we have an injured Galaxy player down as well. Yeah, there were a couple players back down there got cracked on. Great peel back block. Well, this is good awareness by David Wilson. He kind of bashed him a little bit this game. But he sees the ball down there and makes something happen. But watch the blocking by the Claymores coming up the field. That looks like a clip there. There's a hit. There's another hit. Good job at making something out of nothing. 12 yards, to be precise, from what could have been disaster. This is good alertness by the whole team. Watch the blocking. There's one. There's another one. There's one more. That's the guy that's down. That's Kevin Fury, that's, the punter. That's Fury. That's the one that, that's hurt right there. Well, he got off on his own, uh, under his own steam. But if they lose their punter, Frankfurt will be in trouble. 
<laughs> Here he, he, he should have just sprouted wings and flew. They sent him a winding. Looks like he's going to be okay. Kickers, uh, kickers wear those real light pads and, you know, they take the foam out of their helmets because they know they don't have to go through any contact. First down from the 39 of their opponents for Scotland. Ballard goes upstairs, has a man, and he's got it all the way down inside the five to the one. Yo Murphy thinks he got a touchdown, but he's down at the one. Huge play for Scotland. Yo, Murphy was going to have to step up. He just runs right by uh, Chris Hall, 32. And Dixon is late coming over from the safety position. That's a great throw and a good catch. Matt Storm, the backup tight end, has checked in with just over a minute remaining. The Scottish Claymores have to take a timeout just to work out what they want to do. And that just shows you what Ballard's capable of. Yeah, we knew sooner or later Yo Murphy's going to have to step up and get him involved in the game. He caught a lot of balls in the, in, in the last game against Barcelona. Now, let's see if he's touched by Dixon. Because if he just catches it here and rolls on in, Ooh. I don't Ooh. know. Maybe they say Chris Hall touches him on the thigh there, but watch the hit. The Ballard takes. You know something? I think I don't know. The line he did not get touched. touched. That is not a tackle by rule. Someone has to touch you while you're there with the ball to make it a tackle. I think that's a touchdown. I think the refs blew that. And like you said, it looked as though Chris Hall might have scraped his hand along the side of his leg. But it's close. 92 and 98 They've sent in the heavy mob, the Scottish Claymores, Chris Dawson and Matt Storm, check-in eligible. What did you say, the heavy mob? The heavy mob. <laughs> <laughs> but don't mess with this lot, mob. First and goal. Motion. They give. And they're doing the whistles and flags. Well, they're going to have to do this one again. Surround Stacey didn't get in anyway. Ball starts prior to the snap, number 72, five yard penalty, still first down. And that's Randy Beerman, the, the left tackler. That changes the picture considerably. Five yards takes it back to the six. The options change. And the heavy mob come out and the light mob comes in. Scott Cooper and Young Murphy have checked in. Replacing Dawson and Storm. <laughs> Murphy goes wide left, Cooper wide right. Dickerson and Stacy in the backfield. Tate to the tight end. Ballard drops the pass, looks in the direction of Yo Murphy. Got him. Touchdown, Scotland. <laughs> about the corners for Frankfurt gambling. Chris Hall, he turned at the last minute, and made a nice drive on the ball, but it was a second late, and it was really kind of a risky pass because if he gets his eyes on the quarterback, he could still be running with that ball. Gavin Hastings has to make this extra point. This game's going to be a close one, Ooh. and he hasn't. Ooh. Great pressure. Bernard Carter, number 50, coming inside with outstanding pressure. Uh, that could be crucial. Boy, and Gavin, he has struggled. Here's a touchdown, just a quick out to the left side of the three-step drop, but watch 32 Chris Hall. He, he saw the ball. If he just gets another hand up, you're going to get a better look at it here. Three steps, that ball is out of there. And 32 Hall, he sees it right now. He overruns it a tad. 
Pollard froze it a little bit because he knew he let that ball go in, in nowhere zone. But this could be so costly. Uh, you know, as I said, Ron, this could be so close, and it's this could be huge. Absolutely, right over the left shoulder of Randy Bierman comes number 50, Bernard Carter, and I think he had a lot to do with that kick going off to the right. Gavin Hasten seeing that color on the left side of the ball. Mike Bellamy fields at the eight-yard line, less than a minute. Ready, he's got the ball up. Loose ball, and it's still loose. And Sean Jones has got it for Scotland at the 15. We've got something of everything in this game. <laughs> yeah, they're called turnovers. Turnovers will kill you in any game, and they are, will destroy you in a big game. And that's exactly what's happening here. Now, Bellamy, he's just running along. It looks as though he just loses the ball. See how long he takes to tuck it away? But if you look at Bellamy's wrist, he's got his wrist tight, taped up pretty tight. It looked as though Bellamy has got both wrists locked up, so he never really got a hole on the ball. Uh, Shannon Jones, uh, played for Kansas City a few years ago, comes up with a big play for his team, the Scottish Claymores, and it's first down at the 15, and movement, and all the Frankfurt Galaxy linemen point the finger, Ronnie Woolfolk leading the charge there, saying they were drawn, Walt Coleman will tell us. Ball start, prior to the snap, number 13, five-yard penalty, Jim Bella, guilty man, pushes it back to the 20-yard line. Mike Bellamy, there you see the wrist, you see what you mean? Wrong. Yeah, I mean, you, he's, and he may play like this every single game of the year and has played like this his whole career. But there's a lot of friction between those wristbands all the way down by his wrist and the gloves and everything. And he he never looked like he had a hole of the ball. Like he a doesn't line. normally return kickoffs for the Galaxy either. So strange things happening out here. Ballard on first down gets Willie really Tate the tight end. And Tate probably got back to the original line of scrimmage and then ended up about nine yards further back. Frankfurt are not going to give up much. They got to get on the ball here and make a decision on what they're going to do. He's either got to throw it on the ground or... And they're wasting seconds here, the Claymores. They've got a timeout. They don't seem to want to use it. They don't seem to realize that there's only 20 seconds left. They, they, and they're inside 20 now. Ballard has it backed it up in the air. Boy. And that does stop the clock with 13 seconds remaining. But it was as if the Claymores didn't realize there was a minute left, less than a minute left. Yeah, right, right. I mean, that time just keeps ticking away. The, the sideline's going crazy, screaming to Ballard to, to, to run the play, run the play or call timeout. Don Reynolds with his big paws up on that one and just swatted it away. One good thing about that, though, they do have the timeout left. The incomplete pass stops the clock. So if they get a completion before the touchdown, they can at least call timeout again. Ballard on third down and long. Pressure comes from Kerr. Ballard looks for Murphy. Has he got it? Oh. Yes! Oh, what, a, what a catch! Oh. Oh. That was unbelievable. We said, Yo Murphy has to step up with La Chapelle injured. You can't do more than this. That's amazing. You know, sometimes your quarterback can make the team look good, and sometimes the team makes the quarterback look good. I think that's the case here. That's an unbelievable catch from Yo Murphy. And that's two in less than a minute. Timeout. Scotland. That's a third and final timeout. 40 second timeout. This looks like looks like this may be a two-point conversion. Which would make sense because they've already missed the extra point. If it goes in, it makes it a 21-14 game. At the moment it's 19-14. What a catch. Let's have another look at it. He goes to the old post corner. Chris Hall sees it. And he makes him do what he has to do, float that ball out there. But that's an amazing catch. Incredible. And you know what? If we let it roll, I think he got two feet in. In the NFL, he's going to get credit for two feet in. I think he dots the eye and gets them both in. In this league, you only got to have one foot in. Yeah, Jimmy, they, they, he made you look good on that one. 
Boy, but whatever you want to say, once again, Jim Ballard coming through and making the plays. And Yo somehow stepping up big time. And it looks like they're going to go for that two-point conversion with eight seconds left in this first half. What a peculiar game this is. Scotland with the early break, then Frankfurt running the show, and then in the last minute of the first half, it's all been Scotland again. If you take away the first 30 seconds of the last <laughs> minute, it's been a good half for Frankfurt. But they're going to go in trailing. So Ballard, this for two. Looks, has a lot of time now, gets the pressure, just has to get rid of it. And our man, Cavallo. Boy, Cavallo, he's a character. Here's a guy, earlier this week, he did a press interview on the golf course at St. Andrews with one hand. He's swinging the club and talking on the mobile phone with the other one doing the interview. <laughs> you gotta love a guy like that. So it's 19 to 14. That's a puzzle. Another look at the two-pointer that failed. Well, you see, Cavallo came on the delayed blitz. He didn't show right away, but you got to give some credit also to the secondary. Ballard standing back there. He's got no place to really throw the ball. And it's put some smiles back on the faces of the Murrayfield fans who haven't, frankly, had an awful lot to be happy about this first <laughs> half, despite that scoreline. Well, we mentioned special teams at the top of the show, Ron, and said Scotland have got to improve their special teams. They've done that all right. Harrell it is now that feels the low line drive. Looks to try and go somewhere. Stays on his feet. Slippery custom car runs back straight <laughs> into a wall of blue. And that'll do it as far as the first half is concerned. In the first half. And Yo Murphy, really the difference between these two teams with two touchdowns in the last minute of the first half. Well, Ernie Stoudner, he's got to be happy with this group though but look at this catch here I want you to appreciate the extension look at the way he stops the ball gets one in and got the other foot in that is just a an outstanding catch see because this ball has got a real loft on it it's to the corner of the end zone where it has to be the DB does his job now he does his job and comes up with the rock and there'll be a lot of NFL scouts watching that and are logging the name Murphy for when it comes to NFL camp time in a month's time. 19-14 here at the half. The boxing world bowed its head in disbelief when the Dark Destroyer lost his title. I'm not going to make up any excuse. Celtic warrior. His dream showdown looked to be in ruins. I fought the best. I fought everyone. I've never avoided anyone. So now, true to his word, Nigel Benn will return to accept the challenge. To me, Nigel Benn, the legend. Can the Dark Destroyer once again rule the world? Coming soon on Sky Sports. Sky subscriber exclusive from Guardian Direct. Avoid nasty shocks. Take out low-cost home or car insurance with Guardian Direct and £25 cashback will come your way. Call 0645 282820 for a free quote and your subscriber benefit when you take out a policy. Or on your head, be it. Don't miss out if you're a Sky subscriber. Call Guardian Direct on 0645 282820. People try to put us to death. Just because we get around Talking about my generation Things they do look awful Talking about my generation I hope I die before I get old Talking about my generation This is my generation, baby Alistair knocks it wide to me 
a skillfully chested down a turn, and I'm off down the line like a gazelle. I'm leaving my marker standing. My tight short grass fly pumping time. To my right, I hear pounding feet. I stop the ball dead. The defender sliding into oblivion. The roar of the crowd sucks me in. Leave it out, Dickie! <laughs> girl is scream my name from the corner of my eye. I see a flash of blue. What's she know about football, silly me? I bamboozle the oncoming defender. <laughs> oh, I dance round him, then cut inside. A naked woman leaps from the ground! <laughs> and I turn. I look up. Keepers come off his line. The glorious chest. I've shot it, she's coming away, coming to coming away. Not making round the corner. Bang! In the corner of the head. Go! Says it all. I dream of being Brian Giggs. Oh. To be in his boots. His boots. Ow! <laughs> Excellent football games. Scotland's Claymore's lead. The Frankfurt Galaxy by a score of 19 to 14. A lot of scoring, a lot of good things going on. My guest, Jack Bicknow, Mike Carlson, good football game. Good football game, and nobody really has established anything. So it's anybody's game right now. It's going to be an interesting second half. It's a crazy game, I mean, because the Claymores have been out of it apart from the first 30 seconds and the last minute and a half of the, of the game. Let's take a look. I mean, the first touchdown came off the opening kickoff. And Scott Hastings, he gets a good distance on it, but not a lot of hang time, so you'd expect a good return. But it's simply George Coghill coming up on the tackle. And watch Coghill when he comes up on the tackle. Coghill's, what, 34? 34 for the Claymores. There he, he's coming in right there from behind. See, he knows he's got time to do that, so he brings his hand around, strips the ball, and Marcus Thomas picks it up, carries it in for the score. It's a big play early, but sometimes it... it, it it's confusing to the team who scores it because you think, oh, this thing might be easy, and obviously it's not easy because uh, Galaxy came right back. And, and you see they've got a good wall set up for him on the reverse angle. Mario Bailey, he moves away from the wall, and then he starts getting trapped up in people, and he's breaking tackles, and there's Coghill. And see that strip? That's beautiful. Good job. And, and they're in the end zone, and that's a heck of 11 seconds, and, and they're on the scoreboard. That's sort of interesting. But, I mean, it was really good by Frankfurt coming back. And Jay Kearney on the reverse. Steve Pelour with the big block there. Ron Collins leading him in all the way. And it was a good call by them, and nobody seemed to pick it up. I think Forey Duckett's the corner on the left side. He's the one who's got to pick that play up. You've got to holler reverse, reverse, reverse. They should be talking right now. And, and really, they didn't. And they, they're in the end zone, and it was a big play. And you're going to see, there's, there's David Webb. He got caught by Pelour. He's going to be embarrassed about that. Kearney outruns Shannon Jones, and there's Collins, 65. He's going to get the block on Forey Duckett, who's been chasing Kearney all the way across the field, and he's not going to get through Collins. Pelour is going to want bigger shoulder pads because, believe me, <laughs> when this is over, he's going to be laughing at this because this is ideal, great block. But it's a veteran play in the big game, the kind of play that sparks a uh, team to let you know, hey, you got to give it off for the championship. Exactly right. I give him a lot of credit. And the game at this point, it looked like it was pretty much all Frankfurt. You remember they got in on that, that fluke play when David Wilson dropped what should have been an interception, and then Mario Bailey makes this great catch on James Williams for the touchdown. Good job by Pelour. He just he sees man-to-man -man coverage, isolated one-on-one -on -one coverage. He puts it up, and then the guy makes a great play. And you, know, and you this, see this what happens. they're doing? They're running from the shotgun and keeping that back in to give him an extra blocker, which they weren't doing for a while this season. Now, Marcus Thomas made that big play, but he's had two bad punt catches. You see there, he looks up to see the guy coming, which is why he fumbles the ball. And Wilson saved the neck. This is a guy that dropped two interceptions, comes up, saves the day for the, uh, for the Claymores in this situation. He might not be able to catch the ball, but he can run with well, it. Well, it's a big play. It really is. And, and they've got to do a better job of keeping the gunners out of the punt returner's face because it's really tough. You, there's a guy right sitting on your face. And when you haven't played back there, that is the single most difficult position to play in a game of football. 
punt returner, and here's a young man playing there who really hasn't had much experience doing it. You know, that ball's coming down, and you're looking at the ball, and you know the guy's coming in to hit you. It's a difficult situation. And, and now the guy who has really stood up for the Claymores, Yo Murphy. He had to come up big, and he has. Now, this is a nice ball by Ballard, and Yo Murphy definitely has a touchdown here. Nobody touched him. He rolls into the end zone, and then the, the Claymores almost didn't get a score out of this one. This would have been really critical if they hadn't scored, but uh, thankfully they did. But here's a great play, just splitting too deep. 42 is going to make this play and, and just makes a good catch and, and rolls into the end zone. And if there was contact, they could stay down to one. Of course, from this angle, it didn't look like there was contact. And when he's hot, he's hot. You stay with that man. And one thing Ballard does is he just gets the ball out there, and maybe he's being a little bit lucky, but he's had the ball just in the right spot each time, just ahead of the defensive back's hands. He, he wasn't lucky on this one. This, this one was whistled. There's good velocity. That ball's on the, on the line that, like a rope, and it was really a good play. They're thinking fade, and they ran the out. And the out, you know, if you're a corner, you're thinking he's going to run a fade in the end zone, and then here he comes down. See him look inside like he's running a fade, and then he runs the out, and it was misplayed by the corner, but it was a good ball by Ballard and a good catch. And the momentum continued. Here's the fumble recovery. And you don't see two kickoffs fumbled. And that one, Mike Bellamy just dropped before anyone got to him. And now watch Shannon Jones. The effort, of, the effort there is what got it. Right through West Bender. And, and Yo Murphy makes him pay again. Excellent pass reception. And this is a big time catch in any league. It's a great catch. It really is. I got to give this kid a lot of credit. One hand, he does gain control of it, and he does get a foot down. So terrific by them. And both, both feet. Okay, in. it's time to pick up with Gia again, who's found some of our competition winners in the crowd. Hello there. Yes, I do have the competition winners. This is Jackie Bennett. You'll remember I picked your name out of my leopard print hat. This yeah. is her husband, Phil. Where are you from again? Uh, Islington. Uh, Islington, London. Islington. Yeah. But you're a Scottish claimer, so. Yeah, I know. Well, I felt sorry for last year, and I thought <laughs> I support um, uh, underdogs and all that, and like Tampa Bay. Yeah. And, yeah. So do you like the underdog? Yeah. yeah. So are you happy this year? Yeah, very happy. So Seamus. Seamus. Show the camera, Seamus. It's a little it's good a luck charm. Tiny support with the Claymores. <laughs> now, Phil, you're actually a London Monarchs fan. Does this cause any problems between no. you and Jackie? No. Not at no, all? No, I feel sympathy for her, but... <laughs> are you enjoying today? Oh, it's brilliant, yeah. It's really brilliant. Are you having a good time yeah. in Edinburgh? Brilliant, yeah. It's yeah. so good the weekends, and I want to thank you. Oh, it's really Don't good. thank me, thanks, no, it's guys. Really good, yeah. so, so, what's the highlight? A highlight of the game been so far for you? I think it's got to be the uh, fumble. The fumble. Fumble at the end there, because it's turned the game, maybe. I know it's fantastic atmosphere, isn't it? Yeah, it's brilliant. Well, enjoy the rest of the game. Back upstairs to you, Kevin. All right, Gia. The whole of the second half coming up after this break. Sky Sports 2. Why didn't you tell me you were inviting them? I wanted to surprise you. Surprise me then. I eat Aunt the pasta twice just because she is so nice. Angelina. Angelina. With the sad pizzeria. When you walk through the Global Village, make sure you carry a global currency. Over 200 million people in over 200 countries speak MasterCard. Pizza delivery. Back up. Every language speaks MasterCard. Mama knows why ragu sauce for bolognese can bring out the flavor of meat. It is a secret. Would you rather remain anonymous? Or choose a luxury sports saloon that provokes discussion. Down below the surface lurks an intruder, threatening us with itching, soreness and pain. That intruder is athlete's foot. But now there's new Topedo. Topedo cream is a specially formulated dual action treatment for athlete's foot. Topedo relieves itching and discomfort whilst attacking the underlying infection. Ask your pharmacist for new Topedo and sink athlete's foot fast. Best alone with the ball. Keep your memories of this year's European Championship alive with a specially minted two pound coin. To say thank you to their customers, BT are giving money off longer calls in July. 
and August. And August. After you've been talking for 10 minutes, you automatically get 25% off the rest of the call to anywhere. Any time of the day. Any time of the day. What's going on? What do you reckon? It's a good offer, isn't it? I don't know. I'm a duck. It's good to talk, and it's even better in July and August. A new force has been created, and from this energy, a new era has been born. The age of the Super League. As part of this new era, a three-way fight for European supremacy has begun. England, France, and Wales are the challengers for the European Super League crown. See England Clash with Wales, Wednesday night at 7.30, live and exclusive on Sky Sports. We're at the half, and it's the World Bowl. Momentum is such a big thing in this game, going into halftime. The Claymores picked it up. They went in with all the momentum. Let's look at the Frankfurt Galaxy. What do they need to do at the start of the second half to break that? Well, they need to just come out and play, you know, because the score is certainly within range. It's not like anybody's blowing anybody out. So they just need to come back and do what they do best, and that's mix the run, but throw the football, and they haven't thrown the ball up the field, which really is something that they do very, very well. Mm -hmm. And if you look at the Scottish Claymores, how do they maintain it? Well, I would not be surprised to see Ray, Ray Wilsey switch things around from what they did in the first half. Jack was saying they were running simple defense in the first half, make Frankfurt earn it. I wouldn't be surprised they started bringing defensive backs or linebackers at Palour in the second half and try to upset them. All right, now who has the best running game so far in the first half? Well, so far in the first half, neither of them have run it very well, really, when you think about it. Uh, they just haven't, and I, and I think that uh, uh, Scotland is missing a fullback. They, they, they need a guy. Sir Ann Stacey's a fine back, but he needs somebody to, to knock somebody out of the way. And so the running games have really not been, you know, that impressive on the either side. The two teams in the World Bowl are the, two, the only two teams in the World League who go with, full, with fullbacks in front of the running backs. All the others don't. Scotland would be uh, in big trouble already. Yeah. Certainly wouldn't have a five-point lead. Yeah, luckily for both sides, they both turned the ball over and had an equal number of miscues. I think it was very courageous of Frankfurt to fight back after that initial miscue in the opening kickoff. We look at the stats here. You know, turnovers, we talked about that. Time of possession. Galaxy, and that does not sit well going in at halftime down when you've had the ball that much. And we talked about Yo Murphy stepping up. He's got four catches for over 65 yards. But really, Ballard has been the most productive guy. And Ernie Stortner knows that those two turnovers both led to Scotland touchdowns. And the rushing is really what's striking my mind right now. Frankfurt, 55 yards rushing the first half. That may be, not be a lot in average terms, but for this team, it's a, it's a pretty good amount. Yeah, 65 yards per game normally. And Saran Stacey just 28 yards, but he often starts slow. And Ralph Kleinman gets the second half of the World Bowl underway. Marcus Thomas dances around, looks for blockers, and he's back pedaling. Now trying to turn the corner and does so. And Thomas using his head and gets about 16. Must have run about 46 to get it. He used his head and used Cecil Doggett's body. And we watched very closely. My spotter, Kevin Duffy, had his binoculars on all the Scotland players as they came out and didn't see Sean LaChapelle return. Yeah, and, and that, that, that's kind of a misleading stat there. I think that Ballard really has been the more productive. It doesn't really show it on the numbers, but he's put the ball in the end zone and he has, some, has had some great help, too, with some great catches. Marcus Thomas has given the Scottish Claymores a first down at their own 38-yard line. Dickerson and Stacey in the back. And Stacey drops the ball, but falls on it. You wonder if it's big game nerves, Ron, because both these teams and its uncharacteristic players that are coming up with these mistakes. I, I think it is big, big game nerves. I think that has a lot to do with it. But, you know, this is one of the things that guys like Saran Stacey and, and some of the other players 
need to show that want to get back into the NFL. They can't do stuff like this, whether it's a bad pitch or a bad catch or a fumble or whatever. They got to show in big games that they won't have miscues like this. Frankfurt showing blitz on second down and around 17. Ballard goes upstairs, throws it away. He was looking for Scott Cooper. He won't be looking for Sean LaChapelle. We've just heard he's out for the game. A ball to left groin. Yeah, he, he kind of had that look, that growing look. We didn't see anywhere where it looked like he twisted anything or got a knee stuck somewhere. And that's George Coggill. That's that ankle that he had hurt a couple weeks ago in the London Monarch game. And now he had some ice on it. Then now he's getting it retaped. Scotland two of five on third down conversions. And this a long one. The play block kicks down the two. Ballard with time. Flares it out again. He's got a man, but it's going to be short of first down yardage. But it's Scott Cooper's first catch of the ball game. Boy, that's great protection on that time on that play. Not enough for the first down. But I want you to watch the blue shirts up front. This is going to be a relatively long drop, a five-step drop. And a perfect pocket to step up into. And that's experience, I think, maybe for Scott Cooper. Just know where the first down marker is, run two extra yards, and pick up the first down. Gary Harrell was the return man who wanted nothing to do with that. And Forey Duckett has downed it at about the 14-yard line. So not much doing for the Scottish Claymores on their opening possession of this first half. They lead it 19-14. We'll Some people choose a luxury car for the badge. Wouldn't you rather choose one for the car? Beauty. From the first time you use it. Organics Root Nourishing Shampoo. Pasta and sauce. A helping hand with Whoa! unbelievably saucy, real pasta from Bachelors. Whoa! Hey, so it's still a score of 19 to 14. Frankfurt's defense has played very well. Just the turnovers have put them in with the, in with the scores. But what are we looking for Frankfurt to do with the football now? Well, Frankfurt's got to, you've got to put the ball up the field. I really think Steve Fleur is a major league thrower and can throw the ball deep. And they got to hit something, and they'll, they'll hit it, and it, it'll be what they're looking for. Like I said, I'm looking now for Scotland to come after Fleur, um, try to hurry him in the pocket. If he gets the time to throw, he's got guys who can break the game open. And the Gavin Hastings missed extra point could be really crucial here because the one touchdown will put them up by a minimum of two and it's going to you know it's going to make the thing really interesting if we get down to field goal time okay let's get back to the stadium good football game could do nothing with their first possession of the second half. Frankfurt take over on their own. 15-yard line, trailing just by five. In goes Seibert, and where's Bender in the backfield? Steve Pallour gives it to Ingo Seibert, who will pick up around five yards, showing pretty good speed there. Boy, Ingo is ripping off about four a whack. If you can get one of your backs going four carries, four yards of carry, you're doing a pretty good job up front of blocking and running. And that's been something that the Claymores did not expect from the worst rushing team in the league coming into a World Bowl championship. They had 55 yards on the ground in the first half. The Frankfurt Galaxy. That really was a surprise. Second down, Steve Pallour checks off. They go on the ground again. Seibert doesn't get much this time. Looks like he was dropped for a loss. Joe O'Brien comes up leading the cheers. 
These guys fired up both sides of the ball. Everybody knows what's at stake. I think this is one of those games, Ron, where all these players are so many they want to go back to the NFL next season, but nobody's thinking NFL or training camp right now. They I want noticed, the ring. Yeah, I noticed that. I kind of thought this time of the year it'd be one of those stay healthy deals and let the brother-in-law and get it done, but you're right, everybody's after the ring. The four wide receiver package in. Pelour from the shotgun gets hit as he goes down. He's got a man, and it's going to be well short of first down yardage. Barry O'Bailey picks it up. James Williams doing an excellent job of holding him up. And that's going to bring out the punting unit for the Frankfurt Galaxy. I think that was a good job by the defensive line of the Claymores of getting pressure on Steve Pelour. Here's a man-to-man -man tight coverage. That's a great picture of it. You see the way Williams whipped his head inside? He got beat on the play, but if you're going to take the fake, whip your head inside and find the receiver. He did that and was able to make the tackle short of the first down. Marcus Thomas feels that he's 30. Gets past the first man. Runs into his own man. And is eventually dropped after picking up seven yards. Hillary Butler, who only joined the team a couple of weeks ago on the stop. Well, we talked about NFL training camps because a lot of these guys have a lot of NFL experience. There you see 78% altogether. And if you take out the national players who are number 46 around the league, that's virtually all the American players that are in this league have been involved in the NFL in some capacity or other. And, of course, most of the allocated players are on offense in this league. And then they're on offense in this game. One thing's for certain, you're going to see an awful lot of World League players playing in the NFL next year and in subsequent seasons as well. Scotland with a first down at their own 37. Stacy Dickerson in the backfield. Motion from Willie Tate, the tight end. They fake the handoff. Ballard rolls out, has a man, has a first down. Big Willie Tate cocks it up and it's straight into the hands of the Scottish Claymore, Scott Cooper. Alert thinking. The Claymore's bought a break there, though. That play action right there is so effective. It's called the waggle. You'll get run fake from both directions. Watch the directions of the back. And now watch the way Ballard hides that ball. The 49ers do that better than anybody. And then he comes with the bootleg. And that's good awareness by the tight end. A great hit by Doggett. Boy, this is going to be a great highlight film game, you know? Because the ball is bounced everywhere. But all the players say, yeah, well, it was the tension of the day. Stacy looking for running room. Gets inside the 30-yard line. Seven yards. Curtis Cotton on the stop. For one of those games, Ron, and you mentioned it, you, you just get the feeling something's going to happen every time the ball is snapped. Yeah, well, one thing you know is going to happen. Saran Stacey is going to run the ball. Watch how smooth he accelerates through the hole. Very deceptive, but yet he continues to run away from people. A lot of misdirection plays. That's where he works best. He can run inside, contrary to popular belief in the NFL. He does, he, he does run inside effectively. Stacy running inside again, getting very close to first down yardage. Should move the chains on that. Well, if the Claymores were to score a touchdown here, it would put the Galaxy in a little bit of trouble. And worth pointing out that it was Scott Cooper that kept that alive with some alert play after Tate had cocked it up. Sometimes, if you're going to win a championship, you need a break like that. inside will only get a couple of marks buyers eventually all over him and like you said Nick Saran Stacy gets stronger as the game gets stronger and I think that's his experience if there's one knock on him getting back into the league it might be his age you know, 28 years of age the way things are with free agency the league is a young league now He's still worth a look. I think you're right. Don't tell me the NFL is overstocked with quality running backs. <laughs> Second down and eight. Batted away from Ballard. Would you give him a look? I'd give him a look. I'd give him a look only just because of his experience. He's been around. He's got a good head. He's been in, the, in, in, in some key games. You know, he knows what he's got to do. Jim Ballard is worth a look as well. Some very impressive numbers. 
Don Reynolds, the deflection on that play. Don Reynolds has come on the last yeah, couple weeks. He's a player. If you didn't know who Don Reynolds was before, you know now. Third down and long. They fake it again. They run that play that worked from last time. But Ballard's going to have to do it all on his own and has no chance with Fred Foggy wrapped up all over him. That'll bring up fourth down. And Paul McCallum and the field goal unit will come onto the field. They still do a nice job of freezing a couple players, but that time, Fred Fogey, he's he stays at home. He's assigned to that part of the field, and he doesn't get faked out. I think that play would have worked better if you go ahead and run it to the other side. 36-yard effort this for McCallum. He's got a long of 51. Certainly has the range. Now, is it accurate enough? Yes, it is. But there is a flag down. But if that stands up, it gives Scotland an important eight-point lead. But the flag goes against ah, the Scottish Claymore. Scotland. Uh, a lot of these fans don't know it yet. But that's coming off. That's going to be key because that's going to push him back. Holding number 59. Penalty. David Webb. David. David Webb not really used to blocking. He's a, a defensive lineman. Actually a linebacker. He'll be at the top of your screen on the wing. On the line of scrimmage. Number 59. He gets a little flipper there. So now it's 46 for McCallum. It's exactly between the 46 and 47. It's on its way, it's long enough, it's good again. And there's no flags this time. And McCallum has done his job. An eight-point lead, that could be important. Let's go and find out what the guys think in the studio. Now, here it is, the eight-point lead that they have, but you have to say Scott Cooper saved their bacon on the one play. He did, and that was a nice-looking waggle. I love waggles because way back when, down in Division Three in New England, we used to make our living off this. Everybody goes right. It's going to look like this. Only Willie Tate, who's in motion, and Jim Ballard, the quarterback, are going to go to the right. Everybody goes left. Sorry, I got my directions missed, but watch. And the defense will follow. Everybody moving to the left. And Ballard does a nice job of putting the ball on, on his hip. And Jack McNell had a guy, Doug Flutie, at Boston College, who was a master of this play. He really was a master. And that's, we used to call it naked. And that naked block where 85 just comes up and hesitates and releases. But there's a big play right there. And we said what good hand Scoops has. And you saw that one. He just read it right into his hands the whole way. Okay, let's go down to the field to see Gia. She's with somebody very important. <laughs> Well, I've got Captain Claymore here. Thank you, that's a Galaxy fan tooting his horn. Let's have a quick look at your uh, costume here. Pan down, look at these wide fronts. He's all for Scotland here. Now, have you been using your superhuman powers to help the Claymores today? I feel that would be cheating, helping the players, but what I do is I help the fans to get more into it. Lots of noise, lots of cheering. That's all I can do. You've got the Galaxy fans over here. Is it difficult to compete, compete with them? Mm, they're very good. They're actually very, very friendly people. We've been spending a lot of time with them at the backfield party on here. They make a lot of noise, but I don't think they can compete with us, to be honest. All right, back upstairs to you. So, 8.14 remaining in the third quarter. Scotland up by eight. Gavin Hastings will kick it off. Mario Bailey, the deep man. Mike Bellamy is back there as well. Remember, it was Bellamy that coughed up that kickoff inside the last minute of the first half that gave Scotland the chance to go ahead. And the shallow kick that is fielded by Bellamy at about the 17-yard line. And Bellamy spins one way, still on his feet, still on his feet, and with blockers. Cuts back and eventually goes down. Frank Robinson stayed at home, number 43, to make the stop, but Pelour has to do some damage now. The story of the World League so far, very, very...
very encouraging in year two. A lot of close games. Attendance is up, and I tell you, the attendance here is huge as well. And something that I personally take a lot of pride in, Ron, a lot of the, a lot of the national players on all these teams have contributed this year. Yeah, they have. I, I like the part about close calls. Some pretty good games, all close ones. A lot of them have hurt my throat as well. <laughs> 8,892, the crowd here. Pelour, with a lot of time. Goes upstairs to Mario Bailey, who's wide open. James Williams can't get him, but does at the second attempt. But Williams has lost Bailey, and that's gone into Scotland territory. All the time in the world to throw the ball. Just a good job of protection up front. But get into the eyes right now of Mario Bailey. He realized things have broken down, so he starts moving. And George Coghill, you see that slip there? George Coghill, not 100%. That ankle still bothering him. 27 yards for Bailey, back on the ground, just three yards there. David Webb bringing Bobby Phillips up. That'll bring up second down and seven. Still continuing to mix up the run and the pass. I tell you, I can't stop talking about the time that he has to throw the football, though. I saw number 67, Proby, doing some damage in there, finally getting out, but he can throw the ball and nobody puts a hand on him. Boy, life is good as a quarterback when you can throw the ball and keep your uniform clean. Jim Kreiner giving the, the boys an O, a little bit of a pep talk. Second and seven, Pelour drops, pressure comes. But he's got a man, once again, Mike Bellamy, hanging on to about the 31-yard line. Frank Robinson on the stop, but they'll move the chains. And Frankfurt, when Pelour is in a groove, make it look so easy. But, you know, let's give the credit, too, to the guy throwing the ball. I mean, there's some great catches, but Pelour is putting this ball on a line. You talk about what a guy's got to do over here to get back into the league. Well, that's what you have to do. He's stepping up, throwing a hard ball, what they call the six route, the in route across traffic he's putting it on the money a lot of checking at the line Pelour drops gets excellent protection again goes for mario bailey got him has he they ruled it a touchdown and bailey's done it again the matchup problem that time fuller coming over to help out the corner williams I just don't think the Claymores can match up across the board with this firepower. I mean, they're running the same type of plays. Fades where they just throw it up, balls in the corner of the end zone. And I think they're going for two points here as well, Ron, which makes sense because they can tie it up here. Pelour's still in the game. And a key factor, once again, they've taken the Claymores fans out of the game. All 38,000 of them. Phillips and Bender in the backfield. This to tie it up with 5.58 left, third quarter. Bellamy and Kearney switching to the left side. Now Kearney goes in motion. Pelour gets hit, still gets it off, and it's, oh, it should have been intercepted again. But it's an incomplete pass, and it means that the Scottish Claymores are still two points ahead. 58 remaining, third quarter. Shannon Jones and dreams of glory there. But nevertheless, as I think I said it earlier, Ron, when Steve Pelour is in a groove, this game looks very, very easy. Here's a touchdown here. Now they're in a cover two. The corner's staying underneath. But the safety's got to give over the top. The safety can't get there in time if they don't hit the receiver and slow him down. That's the whole problem. The receiver's allowed to blow up the field, spread out the defense too fast, and the safety can't help the corner. And Pelour should be happy. Another ball right on the money. Here it is again. Look at the protection. Boy, you look at that pocket there. Freeze that. That's a nice pocket. It's still there. Look at the pocket. is still there. <laughs> Nothing but white shirts surrounding the quarterback. Sander comes in. Key pickup right there. Wes Bender. Got to have that ball. That would have been two points if he can take that all the way back for a touchdown. A shallow kick fielded by Yo Murphy. Two touchdowns in the first half. 
Murphy gets it close to the 30 yard line to about the 28. Palua's numbers on the day so far 12 of 20 for 157 and two touchdowns. Both of them to Mario Bailey. four yards and four plays that means you can strike on people that means that they can't slow you down and whenever Frankfurt comes with that running game it's like a tease it's like a left jab and then the Claymores get a little antsy they start to creep people up for the run and that's when the big one hits them <laughs> nervous times for both these teams Ballard goes upstairs has a man has a first down and more for Yo He's, he's going to score. What a throw. It's wrong. It's another touchdown for Yo Murphy. And we talked about Scotland hitting back quick, quickly, and they've done it. That was an unbelievable throw. I didn't think that Ballard was going to throw the ball he threw. We talked about that play action, that waggle. He did it to the opposite side this time. But instead of throwing to the tight end on that side, he threw all the way up across the field. Well, you want to talk about why Jim Ballard is in there, and you were right. Steve Matthews, I don't think he's going to see the field today unless that man gets hurt. Now, Gavin Hastings can kick an extra point here. It's a nine-point lead, and that really would be significant. Frankfurt would have to score twice. But he missed the last one. Oh. He's missed that one as well. Gavin Hastings has picked the worst possible day to have a stinker. <laughs> a guy that has done so much on this field and can kick so much better than that. Nevertheless, it's Scotland leading Frankfurt 28-20. Glamorgan take on Worcestershire in the first round of the NatWest Trophy. That's a lovely shot. Stand by for some cracking action as these local rivals set out on the road to Lords. Both teams have the pedigree and ambition to make the September final a dream come true. The NatWest Trophy first round, Tuesday, 10.25, live on Sky Sports. So you have leeches, termites, bugs and bacteria. Uh, They're not that nasty. Just how well can a big company like BT Meet the needs of a small customer. All these creepy things hanging about. What do you do with Basically, them? Basically, we're natural history filmmakers. How important are communications to you? We need to be able to communicate with our customers. It's not just telephones. Email and internet. Faxes, of course. And you do all of this through BT? That's right. Why? BT came along, gave us the total package, rather than individual bits. Do you save money on it? Hundreds over the years. What about growth? The ISDN service. Because we want to put pictures down the line. And also they're able to help with the website. We've got lots of spiders here. BT can help your business grow. Call BT Business Connections on 0800 800 800. Be smart, BT. Treat yourself to a new Peugeot 106 XN from just £99 deposit and get one year's free insurance with the Peugeot Passport Finance Scheme. APR 9.9%. looking on anxiously Jim Kreiner equally anxious the Scottish Claymores protecting an eight point lead thanks mainly to Yo Murphy five catches 136 yards three touchdowns including a 71 yarder and that a world bowl record that last one beating Stan Gelbart and John Horton of 51 yards back in 1991 and Ballard with three touchdown passes in the game that too a world league record Paul McCallum gets it underway. Gary Harrell fields it about his own nine-yard line. And Harrell with running room to about the 38-yard line. Here's a replay of the touchdown. Once again, look at the play action. Watch what it does to the linebackers. Cavallo up front. Cavallo's going in the complete opposite direction. But now to throw that ball that far across the field, and I don't know what Cecil Doggett was doing. I guess he thought that he was going to be able to push him out of bounds. You're going to see it again. That ball's in the air a long time. Doggett's looking at it. 
dug it. Looked as though he was going to knock the ball out. And you're not going to catch Yo. His sister couldn't say <laughs> Llewellyn. Llewellyn. You're going to say it. <laughs> yeah, I can't either. Couldn't say Llewellyn, so he said Yo. Well, he's been in the shadow of Sean La Chapelle all season. What a game to have a game. Yeah. Pelor still in there. Ingo Seibert gets flattened at the line of scrimmage. And may have picked up a yard. Jose Moak Simon, who joined the team this week, was with the Scottish Claymores last season, was cut, sent to Barcelona. Barcelona sent him back this week. And Mike Carlson's favorite player, by the way. Wow, that's outstanding. And you know what? Don't be surprised if he adds another touchdown and another 50 yards to that total. And both these teams are so explosive offensively. Pelour out of the shotgun on second and ten. Lots of time. Looks for Gary Harrell this time. Over. Throws him. Well, how often do you see defensive slugfests in championship games, but not here? I almost get the feeling that Frankfurt is moving toward that panic button. Only because the Claymore's offense is, is, is opened up. Because now they're just letting the balls air out, and that's their offense. The run, as we said before, as we look at Ernie Stoutner. Standing there next to Fred Quillen, the O-line coach, former San Francisco 49er center. The big play is their offense. That's how they got here. The big, huge pass play. They need a big one now with four wide receivers on third and ten. Pelor gets hit and goes down. Joe O'Brien. can bomb away as long as his old line lets him. Number 90, O'Brien comes in late. They've got everybody else blocked. He makes the play. A lot of delayed blitzing, a lot of delayed rushing, I noticed, by the Clay Claymore's defense. I think that's Ray Wills, the defensive coordinator, playing some tricks on the mind of Steve Clemore. That's his hallmark. Barry has to deal with a very tricky snap. Marcus Thomas... Will Thomas better take this. Field at about his own 29 on the bounce. And gets it all the way to the 40-yard line. 3.56 left, third quarter. And with Scotland leading by eight, Frankfurt's defense has got to make a stand here, Ron. Yeah, they do. Like you said, it's the offense for Frankfurt is going to keep them in the game. The offensive line will keep them in the game. But you saw there, they started to get to him a little bit. And now look at the field position that Scotland has to work with. They're not backed up inside the 10 like they were a couple times in the first quarter, in the first half. They can open it up. They can come with the play action. They can use Saran Stacey here and get things going. Cheerleaders changed uniforms, didn't they? They did. <laughs> you sent in a request at halftime. <laughs> Good analysts have to see everything. <laughs> First down, Ballard swings it out to Saran Stacey, who runs into his own man, stays on his feet, but will do well just to get back to the line of scrimmage. But with this eight-point lead, this really is Saran Stacey time for Scotland. If they can get him moving now, Frankfurt really would be in trouble. And the thing about it now, they've got that one extra point over him, too, there, you know. So, Frankfurt on the score, they definitely have to think about going for two. They put him in that two-point land which is key. Going down and getting a field goal here would be prime for the Claymore. Still lots of time left in this ball game. Three and a half minutes, third quarter. It's been an excellent game so far, and I think there's more to come. Ballard, flushed oh, out of the pocket, runs into trouble. Mike Kerr got him from one side. Frank Mesmer got him the other side. And down he went. When you're a defensive coordinator, that's how you design it. When that quarterback gets the last step in his drop, he should be under duress. Watch it here, a five-step drop, and now he's got to start dancing when he doesn't see anybody open. Good job by the secondary of the Galaxy, not giving Ballard anywhere to throw the football. Third down at about 13 for Ballard. Goes over the middle for Yo Murphy again, who is going to be very close. Should have it, but did he pay the price? Uh, he paid the price indeed, Nick. In fact, there was a huge collision there. The Galaxy player down as well. Dixon came down the pipe and knocked out everybody, including his own man who's still down. Cecil Doggett, I think that is. Woo. What a huge collision. That's what you call laying wood. They don't appreciate 
what Yo Murphy has done to him today. You're the safety. Watch the kind of drive he's going to get here. Bam. It's a good thing Yo put his head down. Cecil Dogger wasn't able to get his head down, and that is what a safety is supposed to do. He is supposed to intimidate back there in John, center field. Johnny Dixon has intimidated Cecil Doggett, who is still down on the field, and Yo Murphy. <laughs> Yo's not really jumping for joy. He's, uh, <laughs> he'll, he'll happily sit out of play. Watch, Cecil, watch number 42. That's Dixon in the middle. He's looking quarterback all the way. Well, that goes back to the old school, some of that intimidation that the league used to be built on. Guys like Jack Tatum and Lewis Oliver, guys sitting inside that would intimidate you and make you pay a price anytime you caught a ball in there. And I guarantee you, Yo Murphy's going to take a peek before he goes in there again. So will Cecil Doggett. So will Cecil Doggett. I tell you, though, Cecil is Cecil. as tough as they come. Cecil's had a rough game. I, I got to say it. He has had a rough day. You know, all these defensive backs have. Yeah. Both these quarterbacks have been picking them You're apart. You're right. You're right. Not a good day to be a defensive back. Fred Foggy has checked into the lineup to replace Cecil Doggett. Foggy has been around everywhere with the Birmingham Fire in the World League back in 92. The Cleveland Browns later that year with the Steelers after that. The Panthers drafted him last year. Carolina. Flags come in. Lots of whistles. Flags everywhere. Well, Coleman will adjudicate for it. I'll start prior to the snap, number 61. Five-yard penalty, field first down. Last seat of the center, very key to move. Trying to wonder if eight points is going to be enough. Whether he's going to need more. You do get the sense that both these offenses have, have got a capable of putting more on the board yet. Yeah. Absolutely. I wouldn't rule Steve Pallor out. He's been there and done it. Stacy plows his way straight through the middle into the secondary, and an excellent second effort from Stacy. will pick him up around 12 yards, and you saw the reaction of Randy Beerman there. At last, that running game is starting to happen. And, and this is why this play is so good when they pass off of it. Watch the blocking on the right side. Watch 78, Keith Wagner. Look at Lance Zeno inside. All the blue shirts, Purvis Hunt, they've all got a body. That's called body on body, helmet on helmet. So from first and 15, it's second down and short. Scott Cooper, the motion man. They go on the ground to Stacy, who is not going to get a first down with that. The hole that he was looking for just closed up in front of him. And he may get a yard, but no more than that. Cavallo filled a huge gap, and he had a lot of help. See, during the season, this is where Scotland has been very good. Third down conversion. They're 43%. The best NFL teams might tip over 40%, but usually they hang around 35, 37%. And the Galaxy need to stop this one. Cooper, the motion man. Stacy has got the first down. The ball's out. Was it? Galaxy players very slow to get up. Bernard Carter, Don Reynolds. And it's a first down as the clock ticks away in this third quarter. And Saran Stacey building up ahead of steam. He's had 100 yards against Frankfurt both times this season. And he's over 50 yards so far today. And as Ernie Storner and all these fans know, Stacey gets better. That is the end of the third quarter. The game goes on. End of the third quarter. And that's the end of the third quarter. Scotland leading by eight and driving. The World Bowl will be decided soon. Let's get back to the guys in the studio. Top. They did, and, and Plur is very good at that. And, and, and I think they've got to continue to be aggressive, throwing the ball up the field and then breaking it off when they have to. And, and there's the ball right there, and it's just a great ball and a great, great catch. Super job. Mario barely kept his concentration, got the ball in here. Now here on the Scottish side, we have Ballard. Since he's been the quarterback 13 quarters, 
he's hooked up with Yo Murphy for seven TDs, another play. And that was the big thing because Steve Matthews tended to go to Sean LaChapelle all the time and exclusively. This is a brilliant play, and it works off that waggle we showed last time. And now we talked about the key for Frankfurt is protecting Palour, and we thought, and now if we stop right there, see Joe O'Brien, he started on the inside, and he swings out. The blitz is coming from the linebacker there, and O'Brien's going to come in. Nobody's going to pick him up because Ingo mix, misses him, and now Scotland are starting to do things. See, Ingo's going out, and Palour's meet. A twist is tough. I mean, you've really got to pass people off, and you've got to know what you're doing up front, and, and the twist will really present problems. So what looks to be the strongest team in the game right now, physically? Yeah, well, if you want to talk physical, watch this one. Here's Johnny Dixon coming in on Doggett. Unk. <laughs> Yo, Murphy, his eyes uh, changed color on that hit. Let's get back to the stadium. To Gia, who's downstairs in the stadium. <laughs> <laughs> I've got Cecil here behind me. They split he's got a slight concussion but he's been getting a lot of attention here so it might be more than a slight concussion don't know if we're going to see him out on the field or not I'll try and find out it's back upstairs to the commentators a lot of fun bunch going through another one of their routines a real crowd pleases these guys started out as fans but the Claymore's just decided hey with this much flair Let's use them. Huge fan favorites. Well, with one quarter of play to go in this World League season, Scotland leading Frankfurt by eight. It could have been disaster for them when they lost Sean LaChapelle, but the whole team seems to have stepped up. I think Scotland smells blood in the water right now. And I think they're going to try to put him away on this drive. It's a first down. On the ground again. Not much there. Nobody's putting anybody away. Frank Mesmer puts Haran Stacey away. <laughs> Big Frank, the German national. And then he lays on him. This is a guy they reckon could be good enough to play without that national rule that says somebody's got to be on the field. He's well, that good. A lot of guys don't like that national rule. I know for a fact that Scott Cooper doesn't like it because he feels like people are making an exception for him and they're not judging him on his talent. Hey, Scott Cooper deserves to be on the field, national or not. He's uh, a good football player. As does Frank Mesmer. Saran Stacey wouldn't argue. Loss of a yard. Second and long for Ballard, who gets pressure. Tom Cavallo had him, then lost him, and Ballard does the smart thing and gets rid of it. That'll bring up third down and long. Tom Cavallo once again. The thing that's been effective today is not the blitz. It's the delayed blitz. Cavallo, see, he waited a count and then he came. He did that so the lineman up front would commit to the white shirts and open it up. And you see the way it opened up? It was perfect. Good job of getting out of that, though, by Ballard. You get the sense that the Frankfurt defense understands just how big this series is as well. A touchdown here would really hurt them. Six defensive backs in on third down and ten. Ballard with a lot of time. Has a man, Scott Cooper, was levels, but he's hung on. It's now where are they going to spot him? It's going to be a terrible spot. He's got a bad spot, but that was a great catch. Just as we talked about Nationals, and you mentioned Scott Cooper. Appreciate this catch. Call him a National, call him a wide receiver. Well, call him whatever you want to. That's a great catch. We're talking to him before the game. <laughs> he said, I got about 25, 30 seats here blocked off for, for fit friends, relatives, all that kind of stuff. Well, I have to say that Cooper got a very bad spot there. It's brought him up about a yard short, but the Claymores are going to go for it. Stacey and Dickerson in the backfield, and this play really is huge. Ballard with the keeper. Looks like he may have done enough. Needed to get to the 26, and he got to the 25. And the clock continues to run. Jim Kreiner getting closer to that World Bowl trophy. But it's too early yet to put this game away. Boy, but what a move Kreiner makes in the middle of the year, or excuse me, in the last part of the year, taking 
Matthews out. The guy had won the first half of the season for him and going with Jim Ballard. He knew something nobody else knew. It's an inspired move. Stacy looks to cut back. Gets nothing. Oh, there goes the ball. And the ball is loose, and the Frankfurt Galaxy have recovered it. I don't think he was down either. I don't think he was down either. What are they going to say? Johnny Dixon has come up with it. Here he's fighting for extra yards. And Saran, not a bad carrier of the ball. That's definitely a fumble. It looked as though that ball's out before that right knee touched. That's a good call. And a huge miscue for Scott. That keeps the Galaxy back in the game. In a big way, because if Scotland had put points on there, Frankfurt would have needed two scores, and Stacy knows, and Ernie Staunton knows. Ernie over there telling the team, let's dig in, let's go. But everybody in this ground now knows this game has got a long way to run yet. Steve Pallor gives it to Bobby Phillips. Phillips pursued by Arnold Alley. He's too fast for Alley. Eventually, he pushed out of bounds after about a five-yard gain. George Coghill, but a second fumble for Saran Stacey, really costly. If his right knee touches before the ball comes out, it's not a fumble. And from that look, it was out of there. Saw it better from the other angle. That was clearly a fumble. Second down and five. Palua, who can strike very quickly indeed, has time. Has Jay Kearney wide open to the 40. George Coggill eventually wrapping him up. Boy, that's what happens with a good play action. They got a flag down back upfield. 23 yards if it stands up. Oh, oh and it that's, doesn't. A, that's oh. a killer. That could be the penalty of the game, and Ernie knows it. Oh, that is huge. You go over the 50, approaching what they call the red area, inside 20, and now you get a flag and you go back across the 50. Holding, offense, number 65. 10-yard penalty, repeat second down. Best against the left. Ron Collins. Collins. And yeah, look at that. He's got, a, he's got him in a nice little suplex move there. Boy, that's something they don't call very often in this league is holding. But look at what it did to where the ball was. That ball was up on the 35, what they call the plus 35. Now it's all the way back on your own 30. That's huge. It's like a 35-yard penalty. And it's second down and 15, and Pallor will be forced to throw again. Pressure comes. Pallor goes down. And Brian Proby with his second sack of the ball game. Well, Brian Proby has shown up. He's a guy that's taken advantage of the fact that Herman Carroll, Ty Parton have left this defensive front. He stepped up. An allocated player from the Chiefs. We looked at all the guys from the Chiefs allocated. There's enough of them here to start their own team over here. He gets shook at the line, but then he just beats Terrell Green. And Terrell Green has not played the best football game of his life today. He has been beat inside consistently and once again by Proby. Palua calls a timeout on third and 23. And Brian Proby, we talked about all the defensive line problems they've had. Brian Proby, the allocated player, was injured himself in pre-season and cut, and they had to bring him back because of injuries elsewhere. We're going to take a quick timeout. Back in a moment. There's the ball. And he's picked it up. Best breaks clear. Twinkle toed. All past one. And he should be past another. And there's a third. Even past Newman. Best going through them all. There's a dog. Keep your memories of this year's European Championship alive with a specially minted two pound coin. He had it all. And he's given it all away. Gain possession at banks and post offices. To say thank you to their customers, BT are giving money off longer calls in July. And August. And August. After you've been talking for 10 minutes, you automatically get 25% off the rest of the call to anywhere. Any time of the day. Any time of the day. What's going on? What do you reckon? It's a good offer, isn't it? I don't know. I'm a duck. It's good to talk, and it's even better in July and August.
the action continues, Jack, but when I look at this, Amsterdam seems to be their own worst enemy out there. Well, they're, they're having some problems with their uh, pass protection, and then, and then that holding call really hurts. And it's holding every play. If you want to be technical about it, don't throw it now. Just let them play. I think this is a stage of the game to the referees. It's a championship game. Let these guys go win it or lose it. You got two coaches talking now. Keep those flags <laughs> in the pocket. I've heard that one before from you. <laughs> hey, play. let's get ourselves back to the stadium. It's a good one. Morrowfield be hauling with Ron Pitts. 11 minutes and a second left in the World League season. Scotland leading Frankfurt by eight points in a game that's being seen all around the world and live on Fox TV in the United States, which is where my colleague Ron Pitts normally applies his trade. You'll hear him there in the next NFL season. And throughout Europe, South America, Australia, and just about everywhere else as well. So what you're saying is I could make some new friends out of this thing. Right, you got awesome enemies. There's two ways of looking at this. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you go fishing for compliments. Third down and a bunch for Pallor. And it's picked off. And it's James Fuller. He should try to score with this. Fuller still on his feet. Gary Harrell brings him down. Pallor, Pallor was forced under pressure. Fuller came up with a huge turnover. I knew sooner or later somebody in that secondary had to get a pick. They got a flag down. I got a feeling that could be after the play, though. We have a flag in the play. Scottish Claymores. Well, well James Fuller, who was cut by Frankfurt in preseason and really took that personally. Yeah, yeah. And the worst thing about it, you know, he was an allocated guy from the Saints, went over to Frankfurt and got waved, got cut. You know, that's a phone call you don't want to have to make back home to your scouts and say, well, uh, guess what? I just got cut. And I'm sorry for my conduct on the return team, number 20, returning, striking the ball at a player. James Fuller. 15 yards. Doing some taunting. First down. Now he's going to be sitting down inside underneath around the 40 yard line. And that's just a bad throw by Pallor. He really didn't have any place to throw the football. And you know, they always used to tell us as DBs, Nick, find the nearest sideline and run to it. But we never did that. I think once you intercept the ball, it's like you snap. And all these... The red mist comes down and you're thinking six, I know. What do they call it? Delusions of grandeur go through your head and what you're going to do with the ball after you score and everything. First down Scotland, Jim Ballard. Turnover's continuing to be the story. And there was nearly another one there. Johnny Dixon, the man that Frankfurt kept when they cut James Fuller. Could have had a piece of that. Boy, Johnny, he knows. The players have to show up in big games and make big plays. We've seen a couple dropped interceptions today. We've seen some fumbling. Frankfurt needed that play badly. Second out of ten. Instead, Scotland with a second down. Ten and a half minutes left in the ball game. Scotland reprieve. Motion. Ballard drops. Has time with a swing pass to Ron Dickerson. Gets down inside the 35-yard line. Rickerson. We may not think much of Dickerson's blocking, but he sure put the helmet down and tried to trust somebody there. The crowd here close to 39,000. Really tremendous turnout. I remember a Scottish friend of mine saying in week three, if you could ever bring the World Bowl here, we'd come out in big numbers. And I said, no, you won't. No, you won't. But I'll, I'll That's because you're up. an Englishman. <laughs> well, I tell you, like, yeah. I've been proved wrong. Yeah. Well, you got to be happy after yesterday. Oh, yeah. Especially uh, today. Fred Foggy probably wishes that he uh, could get the play again. And I tell you, after Cecil Doggett got shaken up, now Fred Foggy hurt for Frankfurt. And the power going out. I told you this was one of those games everything was going to happen. Yeah. Meanwhile, Paul McCallum 
is going to attempt what looks to be in the region of a 51-yard field goal. And more importantly, if it is a 51-yarder, the rules in the World Football League here say that anything over 50 yards, you get four points for it. So that adds more insult to the current injury of the 28-20 lead they have. Well, the trick will be for Willie Tate, the holder here, to make sure he spots that ball behind the 40-yard line. Because we've seen one before in the World League last season. Somebody spotted it right on the 40-yard line, and they made it a three-pointer. Well, I've seen teams take a delay a game, move back, so they get, get the extra point. Well, you can see the game. Willie Tate making sure it's beyond the 40. So Paul McCallum, who's already converted one, has another on its way. That's Got the distance. today you talk about guys that got to show him a big game to play he's shown up today and that is not the end of the game for frankfurt but it's close celebrations at murrayfield we'll be back in a moment you're watching sky sports 2. ibf intercontinental light welterweight title action tuesday night at eight live on sky sports We never stop watching S.O. Price Watch. I've always been very competitive. Well, I don't want to hear that, do I? At the end of the day, you've got to look after number one to survive. Yeah, the right car is important to me. I think that it does impress people. Money, nothing to be ashamed of. If you've got it, flaunt it. The places you go, the clothes you wear, the people you're seen with, the car you drive. Well, what do you think? Nah. Not really my style. Know what I mean? Tell Charles I'm on my way. Taxi! We never stop watching S.O. Ice Watch. Successfully, the first four points field goal in world bowl history. When the purple shirts on the other side of the field are somewhat down. But you know, this isn't over. No, oh, it's not. They need to score. They need to score quick. But I, I feel like I'm sensing a little bit of a breakdown the offensive line of protection for Palua. Now, we think that the time clock the game clock is back in business 942 showing Scotland with that 12 point lead Gavin Hastings kicks it off and Mario Bailey makes a hash of that eventually gets a hold of it and then gets flattened inside the 20 James Fuller the first man there and words being exchanged again but James Fuller has made an emphatic point today well the champion is not going to go down easy like Julio Cesar Chavez is not going to go down easy Oscar De La Hoya, he may go down, and he did go down. And the Galaxy may go down today, but they're going to go down fighting. Scotland will have to earn it, that is for sure. It really is the United Colours of Scotland. Paul McCallum from Canada, they have a Finn on their team as well. An Irishman, but all playing proudly for Scotland. This there, there was movement at the line. Frankfurt looked like big George Hegeman took an early walk. There's the glue starting to come come apart from the ship I mean, now. That's Hageman all the way. Meanwhile, we continue to have sound problems here. When we lost Walt well, Coleman's mic, we also lost our own mics, but we're back on now. And that is what they're playing for, the World Bowl Trophy. 
At the moment, Scotland have just a couple of fingertips on it, but Frankfurt haven't given up their grip yet. And certainly Steve Pallor hasn't. Has time, has Wes Bender. Bender to about the 23-yard line. Mark Sander in on the stop, and it's going to bring up second down and around eight to go. Nice catch by Bender. That ball thrown a little bit far inside. Comes up to get the deep gain out of it. Four wide receivers coming in on second down and about seven for Steve Pallor. A cool head needed now, if ever. Out of the shotgun, Pallor has a man wide open. Mario Bailey slips first. but picks up the first down. That'll keep the chains moving. But understand what's happening now on the mind of Ray Wilsey, the defensive coordinator for Scotland. He is not going to do anything to get this team in trouble quick. We're seeing a lot of loose zones. He's going to make Steve Pallor and this offense go down the field very slowly if he can. Flags come in. Well, Coleman will be heard from again. Another five-yard penalty, and the pressure really on Frankfurt. Silly little penalties now. Yeah. As you say, the glue coming apart. Uh, the pressure. <laughs> That's a great analogy you make, too. They still got a hand on that trophy. They're not That's right. Out. They haven't let it go no, yet. You're not getting it. Don't put this one in the book yet. Harrell in motion. Shotgun for Pallor. Swings it out. Jake Kearney's got it. It's met straight away by James Williams for virtually... <laughs> Back to the line of scrimmage, five yards they'll give him, but it's a lot less than they needed. Second down and ten. Here's a good job of a guy knowing what he has to defend. He knows he can't give up a deep one. He knows it's safe to break up on the ball and make the short tackle. Yeah, the second down play. Second down and long for the Frankfurt Galaxy. Give it on the ground to Ingo Seibert, who doesn't anybody. Arnold Allais in on the stop with some help from Jason Buck, the former Redskin and Cincinnati Bengal, who played in two Super Bowls, has a Super Bowl ring, wants to a World Bowl ring. Funny story about Buck. Here's a guy retired out of the league. He's on his farm in Utah, gets a call on his mobile. Somebody on the other says, will you come to Scotland and play football in the World League for two weeks? He thought it was one of those farm hands playing a trick on it. <laughs> Third down, Pallor in trouble, gets it off, and it's incomplete. No flags, James Fuller all over Gary Harrell, and Fuller really has stepped it up at a crucial time. And you know what about Jason Buck? You mentioned Jason Buck there. He actually flew in and landed on the Sunday morning of the game, took his physical here on the field in the afternoon and played later that day. You know, the, the, the protection is holding up just enough for Ballure to get the ball out, but it's breaking down. That time, Buck, an old pro, working on a guy who's been in the pro league. Beery gets it off. Good kick. Marcus Thomas takes at his own 20. And there's a bit of space ahead of him, but Hillary Butler, number 57, was the first man down there, so Scotland will take over at about their own 27-yard line. And they have a 12-point lead here in the fourth quarter at Murrayfield. While it looks like any other beetle, has a more powerful muscle structure under its shell. And the only giveaway is a tiny marking on its rear.
Hey, this is a game of history in the making. Yo Murphy, now Paul McCallum, 52-yard field goal, four-point play. And this one, he's got it all the way. It's got extra yards on it. He's done it before this season, and the happiest guy in the stadium had to be Gavin Hastings because he's bailed him out for missing those two extra points. I probably would have punted. Maybe that's why I'm sitting up here. <laughs> <laughs> because that was a heck of a call. Hey, the fans in, uh, up in the stadium seem to be enjoying themselves. It's a good football game. Claymore is holding their advantage, 32 to 20. Thirty-four left in the World Bowl. Nick Halling with Ron Pitt. Scotland with a 12-point lead and with the ball. You know, I'm surprised they kicked that ball. 12-point lead, six minutes left. Doing a pretty decent job of running the ball with Grant Stacy. Why punt that ball? I think that's you're in a position you got to go for it. Well, Scotland in a position now to put it on ice. Jim Kreiner, who watched his team go two and eight the worst record in the World League last season. They bounced right back, 7-3 and three in the regular season, the best record in the World League. Are they going to crown it with a win in the World Bowl? Jim Ballard behind center. He's had an excellent game again on first down. He's going to go and throw again. He's gone long. Oh, great coverage. It's a catch to Scott Cooper, is it? They're saying he's out of bounds. Looks like Murphy who's come up with quite a few catches today, and that Galaxy fan's face says it all. <laughs> That's outstanding coverage on the play. That surprised me a little bit. I think Jim Kreiner just wants to open this defense up, knowing that they think it's going to be run. You can't cover anybody better than that. Brings Brett up a second, on the coverage. second down and 10. Yo Murphy has got over 150 yards through the air today and three touchdowns. What a game. They show blitz, they don't come. He's got him. Yes, they do. Flags come in. Saran Stacey oh, oh, pulls his way. Oh. Still going. Oh. That's a tremendous effort from the offensive line. Lots of flags there, and it did look as if Frankfurt jumped early. Decline the penalty, take the yards. That's an outstanding job of the offensive line, moving people. And Saran Stacey once again getting stronger as the game goes on. Saran Stacey going through the heart of the Galaxy defense as well. It's gone against Frankfurt. There's confirmation of that right through the middle. Talked about where he runs inside. He's a tough inside runner. Well, those yards for Stacey won't count. Just looking over at the uh, the board in front of me that our stats man Chris Hanley has just about got everybody's numbers and contributions so far. Stacy closing in on 50 yards on the ground. He's got 49 so far. Second down. Not much doing there. Stacy maybe picked up just a yard. Curtis Cotton in on the stop. But this is just what they want. Five and a half minutes left now. Stacy's the master of eating up time. And a guy that's been consistently productive for the Scottish Claymores. He's carried them through both of their last two seasons. Over 700 yards each time. 2,200 all-purpose yards. And I know we're coming back to something we talked about earlier on, but surely worth an NFL look. Movement again at the line. Third down. No flags this time. Stacey's got some work to do and doesn't get it. Tom Cavallo came up and just the ankle tap enough. <laughs> Once again, Cavallo. He's had a game. Cavallo probably a little bit too small to play in the NFL. Maybe a step or two too slow. But if you want a guy who's going to be around the football, a guy who will play and give you 100% every down, then he's the one. Paul McCallum. He's nailed two tricky field goals. Handles punting duties. Um, in the world. It goes out of bounds at about the 35-yard line. Now, is this going to be the second World Bowl to reside in the British Isles? Remember, the London Monarchs claimed the inaugural World Bowl back in 1991 against the Barcelona Dragons. That was a shutout, 21-0, an incredible day in Wembley. I think all the 61,000 fans that were there will never forget it. Glory days then for the London Monarchs. Not too much glory since, and you just wonder 
if the Scottish Claymores are going to pick up the World Bowl. Certainly closing in with four and a half minutes remaining and a 12-point lead. The Frankfurt Galaxy have got to get something moving fast. That's why they put in the four wide receiver package with Pelour in the shotgun. Bender there to block, but Pelour's going upstairs. And he looked for Gary Harrell, but James Fuller had coverage and there was no shot at a completion there. And the pressure on Steve Pelour is intense. Right now, the only thing that their run game can be used for is to throw them off balance with a little draw play now and then when they get spread out in that four wide out package, as you mentioned. But outside of that, everybody knows the ball's got to go vertically up the field. And they have to get a move on. The blitz comes. Pelour has seen it, got rid of it. David oh. Wilson misses a tackle, and oh. it's a first down for Mario Bailey, who, what a, what a move. David Wilson was left standing. Oh, what a move, I tell you that. That's one reason that the chains move for this team, and the reason they're here. They've got some wide outs, they can make plays, they got a quarterback, they can get them the ball. Four minutes left. Pelour upstairs again has Gary Harrell who steps out of bounds ahead of David Wilson down to the 38 yard line stops the clock 353 left can Frankfurt close that gap Jim Kreiner knows no chance of celebrating yet Ernie Staunton knows his team has got to do something fast time the biggest enemy now for the Frankfurt Galaxy. Low snap. Pelour handles it well. Gets it off. Has Mike Bellamy, who rolls out of bounds. And it looks like he's got enough for a first. They got to get on the ball, though. Doesn't get out of bounds, though. They downed him before he got out of bounds, so the clock continues to run. 11 yards for Bellamy. Three and a half minutes remaining. Frankfurt. And the Claymore's got a problem on the defense. They're not sure. They got people running on the field the last minute. Pelour goes, has a man, and that's because of the confusion. Pelour with another completion. Look like Bellamy once again. That'll bring up second down and around three or four. Frankfurt doing a good job of not calling timeout. They got two left, and they realize they got plenty of time. Plus, they got a two-minute warning. It'll stop the clock. Pelour has another man again. Jay Kearney gets himself out of bounds ahead of Corey Duckett inside three minutes remaining. Uh, that's, that's, that's face Flags. mask. They're going to get him for the face mask, if not the personal foul for going around his head. Before he duck it. This is personal foul, face mask. Let's see what they call it—a five or a fifteener. If it's an, if it's intentional, it's a fifteener. If it's five, if it's not intentional, it's a five-yarder. Either way, it moves the galaxy yeah. very close. And it's the big one, half the distance to the goal, so it's at the five. That's a big, big penalty. With right here, all the work is being done by the wide receivers. It's going to happen right here on the tackle. His left hand has his head down. They both caught it. And you have to call those. 2.54 left. Frankfurt knocking on the door. Pelour from the shotgun. Lots of time. Goes over the middle. Oh. Got a man. Oh. Touchdown Frankfurt. Mike Bellamy. This one is not over. You cannot give a quarterback like Steve Pelour that much time to throw the football. Under normal circumstances, he should have about three seconds max. Maybe 2.5 to get rid of it. I guarantee you Pelour had at least four, four and a half. He sets his feet, and once again, he throws, and nobody touches him. And they're going for two. Uh, look, there's other, now it's one. They're going for one because they know they need another score to win the game anyway. So Ralph Feynman will attempt to make it a five-point ball game, as you say, Ron. 
the two points wouldn't make any difference. Kleinman nails it. And with two minutes and 50 <laughs> seconds left. They, they, not, not, I think they got another full hand back on the trophy. Yeah. <laughs> if you're going to take the champions down, you've got to take them down. They're not going to give it to you. Pelour, 21 of 33, 243 yards, three touchdowns. Similar numbers to Ballard as well. It's been a quarterback's day. 1,001, 1,002. You can go on and count forever, but look at that. Look at the protection. Look at the clear lane of vision he has. That's why they want defensive linemen to get their hands up, to rush inside. That's why you hear people talk about inside pressure. He can't see down the middle of the pipe like that. When you don't have it, that's what happens. He stands in the rocking chair and shoots your eyes out. And another thing, Ron, 65 yards, took just a minute, 40 there it the is. Clock. And they didn't use a timeout. Key, they still got two big boys sitting up there on the board to play with later on. But the defense has got to stand up now. Now, if you're Jim Priner, what do you come out with? Your conservative game plan, your approach is gone. You got to come up with something that's going to move that ball down the field and eat up time, but yet very safely. Kleinman gets it on the way. Scott Cooper is back there for the Scottish Claymores. Marcus Thomas is with him. Cooper just trips up to about the 22-yard line. Pelour on that last drive, 6 of 7 for 59 yards. Cool as a cucumber when they needed him. Ernie said something funny the other day. He says, well, how do I see this game? I'll tell you how I see this game. According to the papers and everybody in the league, we're supposed to get killed, so I guess we'll just go take our medicine like men and get killed. <laughs> yeah, right. And if you believe that one... He's been around long enough to know that uh, you can, yeah. what people like us have to say about it often doesn't count for a heck of a lot. <laughs> it's what the guys on the field have to say about it that counts. Ballard has a man. And a missed tackle again. First down, Yo Murphy continuing to torment Frankfurt. And that's what I'm talking about. How are you going to move the ball downfield? Effective yet very safe. A quick turn in. You see the DBs playing off? Throw it, complete it, move the chains, and now they should stay in the into the huddle for the full 19 Time seconds out. remaining on the play clock. That's their first team. Uh, Time out. <laughs> Time out. They were going to let it sit down yeah. and burn the, the uh, two knew. minutes. Yeah, the Claymores knew what they were doing. Frankfurt had to call another time to timeout. Well, can they do it? They have one timeout left. There's a two-minute warning, but Frankfurt need the ball. Scotland just needed to hang on to the ball. See, I, I think, I obviously, Frankfurt's got the problem. They need the ball, but that's a huge first down for Scotland because now they can run a play here and keep the clock rolling and force Frankfurt to burn their time out. They may give them the ball back, but they got to make sure they give them the ball back deep in their own territory on a nice punt. And now C. Pelour has no timeouts coming up the field. You know what I've enjoyed about this game, Ron? So many bowl games, college level, at the Super Bowl level, they're disappointing when you get there. But this one has been a thriller right from the last Oh, absolutely. Play. Well, that's the way a championship game should be. Two teams representing the World League properly should show up and do business properly. And the two best teams in the World League as well. And when you think that uh, Yo Murphy's really only getting this playing time because Sean LaChapelle went out, but hasn't he made the most of it? First and ten. They give it to Stacy. Stacy trips, jinx. This is no time for a fumble now. We'll pick up around four yards. And that will probably go to the two-minute world warning unless Ernie can get the clock stopped, which he has with 2.06 remaining. Frankfurt, that's a third and final game timeout, 40 seconds. I don't, I don't know if I quite understand that. It saved because, them six seconds, but so what? Yeah, but you got one coming. You got an automatic exactly. timeout coming. Absolutely Save right. one for your offense, at least one coming up the field. I don't now. understand that call. They can't stop the clock after the two-minute warning. I, I, that's a, I don't understand that call. If they, if they give it to Stacy three times and he makes a first down, that's the ball game. 
putting tremendous pressure on your defense. And even if you do get the ball back, your offense, as you say, has got to hit sidelines all the time. If anything, that, that timeout helps Scotland. Yeah, I agree now, now Ballard's got a chance to go back to the sideline and, and think things over one more time. Boy, yeah, 17 to 28. But 263 and three TDs, it's production. He lights up the scoreboard. So does Yo Murphy. Ballard has it tipped. Oh, oh, that's a huge play. Bernard Carter. Mm. Jumping around Frankfurt. No, they need a turnover. I don't like three that call either, ball. and I'll tell you why. You throw the ball incomplete. Now you stop the clock again before the two-minute warning. This defense is thinking turnover, but at the same time, it's got to stop Scotland making a first down. They've got to get the ball back somehow. Scotland needs that clock to run, even if they give the ball up. And now there looks to be some... Was there too many men on the field? It looks to be... There's a flag. We have an illegal defense on the previous play. Oh. Five-yard penalty. And it's still be second day. And that's one of those penalties. Illegal defense that could be part of the rules in that you cannot blitz more than three to one side. And Ernie's hot about it. I'm still not sure what form of illegal defense. Legal substitution. Uh, a violation of the national rule. Well, it's a national series. Maybe they didn't have big Frank Mesmer in there. Wow, wow, what a way to perhaps well, lose Ernie's, a... Ernie's furious about it. What a penalty to give up. Now, you know what's like ironic that. about this? In the beginning of the year, the first game of the season... We didn't rush three men to sign him, but it's the clock. Find out. Well, they're saying that uh, it was too many men rushing, as you said in the first place, Ron. You can only rush three to one side and we know it's been commonplace the last couple weeks as things get tight for the coordinators to sneak up a fourth guy in there boy what a way to perhaps lose a full grip of that trophy and it's second down and just a couple now for the claymores 203 left in the world ball they give it to stacy and stacy will be close but i don't think he got it Frankfurt, and the ball comes loose. But uh, I think his momentum stopped. Curtis Cott scoots off with it, but definitely whistles before Stacy coughed that one up, and there's players still down after that. Real intensity on that drive. That's a two-minute warning. Two minute warning. 57 left in the ball game. The Scottish Claymores are ahead by five. Time running out for a score. You're watching Sky Sports 2. Sky Sports presents one of the biggest nights in the world wrestling calendar, featuring the WWF Championship bout, the WWF Intercontinental title, the WWF Tag Team Championship, and the biggest bout of them all, King of the Ring. Some may dream of being king, but only one man can achieve it. WWF King of the Ring, tonight at midnight, live and exclusive on Sky Sports. S'il vous plaît, le chemin est long et ma roue est cassée. Monsieur, ma vache est prête à vélé, mais le pot est mal engagé. Comment vous remerciez Ah, oh, une bière pour monsieur, s'il vous plaît. Une stellar, toi. Et la monnaie from Canada comes the original fruit-flavored sparkling spring water drink. Ask clearly for Canadian. When you buy the new Peugeot 106, oh, you're sheeted in my car. You get free insurance for a year. One fifty.
57 left in the World Bowl. Nick Halling and Ron Pitt. Scotland with a crucial third down coming up. Ernie Storner still seething about that penalty. Well, well, he's right, though. Well, maybe he'd not be right, but the problem is you can only rush three to a side. Watch the left side of the line of scrimmage. That's one, two, three, four. Caballo makes it the fourth guy. And Mesmer is the national, so they can't say that it, they violated the national rule. But they stopped Stacy on second and two. It brings up third and a short one. And this is huge for Frankfurt. They've got to stop this. Ballard rolls. He's got nowhere trouble. to throw. And is it complete? They're saying it's incomplete. Oh. Oh. So the Galaxy will get the ball because Scotland will be crazy to go for it there. They were looking for the money man, Yo Murphy. Yeah, and uh, Ballard cramped up. Boy, it was a nice play. The rollout, give him time to look around, but look at the coverage. There's a white shirt on a blue shirt everywhere. Oh, oh. Murphy's come That's up with good. some great catches. That's good football. That's yeah. just good football. Now Paul McCallum, the pressure on him. He's got to get this one off. Gary Harrell calls for the fair catch, makes it at the 27 yard line, giving Steve Pallor a minute and 45 to move that thing 73 yards. And I tell you, he could do it. But if I'm not mistaken, he has no timeout. No timeout. And that goes back to that one call made by Sturdy Sounder. I don't quite understand. So now, if you've got no timeout, 145 on the clock. You got to think sideline. He can work the, the middle part of the field early, but sooner or later he's got to go to the perimeter, perimeter to get the ball out of bounds to get the clock stopped. The season comes down to this one final drive for the Scottish Claymores and the Frankfurt Galaxy. Shotgun and four wide receivers in for Frankfurt. Harrell in motion. Pallor has time. Goes to the sideline. Has a man. He Mario got no, he didn't get out. The didn't clock's get out on. Of James Williams with an excellent tackle. This is a case where he'll call everything at the line and maybe two plays at the line. And how fast they get lined up if they don't get out of bounds is everything. But they've got plenty of time left. Remember, a field goal, no good. They have to get six. Time again for Pelot. Got a man over the middle. Doesn't want to be there. Right in the middle. Can't stop the clock. Mario Bailey again. A minute 13. It's still running. But at the same time, he's got to keep an eye on the down and distance. He can't just throw the ball down to stop the clock. He's got to know where the chains are. Second and four. Pelot shotgun again. The four wide out staying in. He's overthrown everybody. Looking in the vicinity of Mario Bailey. James Williams in coverage that does stop the clock 59 seconds what a thriller this has been Boy, right from that opening kickoff you know you lift weights in the off season you go through all that stuff in training camp and this is what it's all for right here you can't get tired on this drive this is what all that stuff all that practice is for the world bowl championship the final drive third down and four it's a two-down situation for Frankfurt, obviously. Flag. Flags. Stops the clock again. You can cut the tension in this stadium. <laughs> Ball start. Prior to the snap. That's Ron Collins, the left tackle, for the second time in this half. And they can't afford it. They need every yard they can get. What a contrast to last year. Last year, Frankfurt had the lead, and Amsterdam came storming back with a nail-biting finish. This year, it's Scotland hanging on, Frankfurt coming back. Now it's two down territory, obviously, third down and very long. Ballure's got to be careful not to be impatient and try to get this whole thing. You get half of it now and get the rest on your, on your last down, your last shot. And all the guys that make up the fun bunch for the Scottish Claymores. They've gone onto the sidelines, waving flags, getting the crowd into it. These fans, everybody doing everything they can to help the Scottish Claymores. It's coming back 
to last year. Remember that last pass that went into the end zone, incomplete. Are we going to have drama like that here? Third and eight, Harrell, the motion man. Fuller from the shotgun. With time again, has Harrell. Harrell hit by Fuller and Williams. Oh, no, he didn't get out of bounds. He did not get out of bounds. Did he get the first down? Short of the first down as well. Fourth down oh. and a yard. Clock still running. He might run it. But now you're going to lose more time. They can't They can't just spike it. It's fourth they, down They got one. two choices. Quick out. Or they got to run it. 34 seconds. What's the bad snap? down but they can't stop the clock i think that was a planned play and the refs are going to talk about it oh ingo cyber oh. keeping his head oh wait a minute i don't know if that was a pet well the clock is down to 19 seconds the game clock but another call a fourth down fumble. that's a fourth down fumble fourth they can't down. the ball <laughs> And that a means fumble it's all on, over. Here's the rule, Nick. A fumble on fourth down, the ball cannot be advanced by anybody else by the person who didn't touch it first. The person who touched it first was Steve Pallor. That rule goes back to, I don't know if you remember, the Oakland Raiders did that with Mark Van Egan. Watch this. He touched it. Well, did it touch him, though? Well, you hate to see a magnificent game it ended like that. Uh, that was a planned play. That ball, I don't know if it touched him, but if it touches him, they're going to talk about it. I don't know if the ball touched him. It seemed to brush his leg. The contact was incidental. Now, once again, the rule is... It's all academic. The Claymores have got it. It's official. Within the last two minutes... If a fumble occurs, the only person that can advance that fumble is the man who had last possession. That would have been Steve Fallor. But does it touch him here? Oh. Or by rule, as a quarterback, is he considered to have first possession? Well, nobody wants to get off this field, least of all Ernie. But it's not coming back. And it's over for Ernie Stortner. And it's over for the Frankfurt Galaxy. And the Scottish Claymores have capped a remarkable transformation with the World Bowl. But you have to feel a little bit of sympathy for Stortner and the Galaxy. They put up a magnificent performance this evening. was considered the fumbling player or the player last with possession the rule is in the last two minutes of the game you cannot advance the ball if you were not the player who had last possession Ingo was not the player with last possession he just picked it up and ran with it but my question is and this seeks further interpretation of the rule did he actually touch the football it went through his legs clean this will be the last play of the season. Jim Ballard takes the knee. Jim Kreiner is about to get a bar. Bill Mars is in there as well. <laughs> but Ben Torriero hasn't missed a Gatorade bath yet. And he wasn't going to miss today. And Scotland have completed a magnificent transformation. Absolutely. It, it did what it was supposed to do. It went down to the wire. This man played a huge part in it. So too did that man there, Yo Murphy, when the chips were down. When Sean LaChapelle limped out of the game, it looked like trouble for the Scottish Claymores. Murphy stepped up. The defense stepped up. Because Paul 
Lua tested them to the limit. And you know something interesting? Well, that's a great picture right there. Sometimes when the big gun that you've been preparing for goes out of the game, Nick, it really screws you up as a defense because you don't always prepare for the other guy. And today, the other guy was Joe Murphy. And look at those numbers for Jim Ballard. Since coming off the bench in week eight, he has just been sensational. And they're going to be NFL scouts looking at that, those numbers and saying, let's have a look at this guy. Cut by the London Monarchs without being given a chance. He comes back a year later to win the World Bowl. We can now talk to the head coach, Jim Kreiner. Let's go downstairs. It feels wonderful. I can't say enough about the players and the coaches and the kind of that job they did to help get the program turned around. So were you worried when Sean LaChapelle went off because he's a very important player for you guys? Well, we have a philosophy that we can't worry about who's down, but who the, the next guy is, and we knew somebody would step up. How are you going to celebrate tonight? Well, probably with my wife, very quietly. <laughs> <laughs> Thank Fantastic. You. I'll let you get back to the celebration. Thank you. Hey, that's a happy guy there. You know, a lot of people with Jim Crown, an excellent job. Ray Wilsey chipped in again. Yep. You know, that's three uh, World Bowl three championships. World Bowl rings. Yeah, nobody's done that. And, and Ray, like we said, they adjusted really well. But it's a shame that the game ends like that because you hate to see, you said it before, and Jack said it, you hate to see the referees take over a game in the last three minutes. But you know, the best team during the year won the World Bowl, yep. you know, and, and you got to give them credit, and I give all the credit in the world to Scotland, because they deserved it, they won it, and good for them. And we got, we got Yo Murphy on a unanimous MVP vote here. And, and we have Sean LaChapelle down with Gia on the field. Sean, you're World Bowl champs, but a bit of a disappointment for you. A little bit of a disappointment. I pulled my groin. But we won. We came here to win. Uh, Yo Murphy played a hell of a game. I'm, I'm happy for him, and I'm happy for myself because in the beginning I set out to win a championship, and that's what we did, and that's what our team did, and, and things couldn't have gone better for us. So now you go back to the States in a couple of days. What next for you? I uh, get healed, and then I start running again and uh, look forward to going to camp with Kansas City. So how are you going to celebrate tonight? I'm not. I'm going to wait till I get back home and celebrate with my family. Great. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Back upstairs to the studio. Hey, that's congratulations to the London Monarchs. But again, going back to, to Yo Murphy, him and, him and Ballard seem to be a perfect mix. Well, you know, that's a big thing. Jim Ballard came in just three games ago, and Yo Murphy had hardly seen the ball all season. We kept saying, sooner or later, he's got to get the ball. And Ballard went right to him. And that's one of the reasons why he's able to come up and play so big today. And sometimes you just spread the ball around. I mean, uh, Sean LaChapelle is a great player, but, you know, other guys are looking to get the ball, too, and, and they spread it around. They did a good job, and they deserve to win. Hey, and there's another receiver, Scott Cooper. He's down on the field with Gia. Scott, it must feel fantastic. You had a fantastic game today. How do you feel right now? I'm absolutely numb. I can't believe it. I mean, I, I can through the trials and tribulations of last year, and... I can't believe we are World Bowl champion. It was such a close game. I just, I just can't believe it went down to the wire like that. But here we are, we won. And uh, I'm so, I'm so happy for the people of Scotland um, to be Scottish and to play a part. Oh, I'm, I'm so proud. Um, Fantastic! You had 35,000 people here behind you. Where did they come from? And I, I tell you, I hope they all come back next year because they can see what American football is all about. An absolute thrill, and I hope they all enjoy themselves. And we, we became champions for them, and with their help. Great, I'll let you get back to the celebration. Could we have asked for a better football game? You know, it, it was great. They, <laughs> both teams just played as hard as they could play. That, that kid, he's really happy. Yeah, he's very sure. proud of Scotland and good for him, you know. And, and this crowd was important, not this, only to Scotland, but to the World League. And, and, and it really is a, a great thing to see. The amazing thing was how the Galaxy were able to quiet this crowd. Because we've been up here when it's been 13 or 15,000, and it seems like they never shut up. But a couple of times in this game, when Frankfurt came back, this crowd went quiet. You know, the great thing that I liked about this game is so many times you get into a championship 
championship contest, and it becomes a slow, struggle, defensive game. This was a big-time offense. And crazy plays, too. I mean, it may, might not be the best football game we've ever seen in terms of quality of play, but it was one of the most exciting you'll ever see. Had, did the crowd do a lot for the, uh, for the Claymores? I think it did. You know, they, they, the crowd is behind their team, and, and they were excited. So I'm, I'm really happy for Scotland and their fans. Hey, here is the Scottish Claymores receiving the trophy. Now, this is a heavy piece of and, trophy. Uh, 41 pounds it weighs. We had it up here in this studio a couple weeks ago, and, and, and you don't pass that part. thing around. That's right. Mm -hmm. yeah. When you add the bottom part to it, it's 71 pounds. That's what, five stones? That's a lot of weight there. <laughs> you, let Leah, you let Wagner, you let him do the lifting. Because you see uh, Kreiner is trying to call for somebody to pick it up, because he's definitely not trying to pick it up. <laughs> It's Neil Austrian, the president of the National Football League, and they're, they're very, very excited about the league this year. You know, other years you've said, is it coming back, isn't it? There's a commitment to this through to the, uh, the television people that really supported it, but Neil Austrian is very happy right and now. And for him to come over and see 30, you know, almost 39,000 people in the crowd has got to do a good thing for the, for and, the NFL. And what about this? NFL teams next season, will they allocate more players to the World League? I think they really will. I think they see the great value that snaps and, and opportunities to play will give you. If you're a third quarterback holding the clipboard, you're not going to get any better doing that. You're over here taking snaps, you're going to get better. Look at that crowd. I mean, it's an incredible crowd. They've been into football all the... <laughs> Look at Keith Wagner. He's having a great time. words for Ernie Staudner, Frankfurt. I mean, they played a tremendous game, and they weren't, they wouldn't quit. They didn't quit right down to the end. I'm gonna run back the game here. with this, too, is that I don't think one Scottish person left the game. You know, I mean, they stayed there to the end, and they're getting involved with the celebration. This is, a, this is great for the Claymores, for Scottish football, and for the World League in general. These Scottish people are tough. You know, you watch that movie Braveheart. <laughs> and I got to I got to say one thing. I got to apologize to all our Scottish viewers and fans because I've been up here for ten, now, now for ten games, for and the weather was it was horrible. And we've had the best day you could imagine weather-wise. So thank you, Scotland. Hey, and that that is that is also played a major part in, in today's game. The weather, excellent weather, excellent conditions. Fans were great. Oliver Luck, president of the World League of American Football, uh, and I'm sure everybody from all the administrators. I've been very pleased with what's going on so today and, and throughout the season. Well, Oliver built that franchise in Frankfurt, and they get 30,000 a game regularly. So it's great to see another city getting 30,000. 30, Oliver. So that's it for the World League in 1996. Attendances are up an average of 35%, closer games, better quality of play, and now there's talk of possible expansion in two years' time. The future looks bright for the fledgling league, my thanks to the most successful coach in the history of the World League, Jack Bicknell, to Mike Carlson, American football's answers to David Bellamy, and to Gia Milinovic, and she really doesn't have any equivalent. And of course to you, all for watching this season. We'll see you soon, and in the meantime, congratulations to the Scottish Claymores, World League champions of 1996.